the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I believe, I believe. Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, 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 I believ
But how come we want to become like Christ and we never get to talk about him? The only time they talk about Jesus in meetings is crusades. And they just summarize him and say, all right, march to the front. Hallelujah. If, please appreciate the music director. Let me use this. He's so smart. Hallelujah. Come on, I appreciate him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, if my goal is to become like him, Hallelujah. The more I see him, are you following me now? I look at his life and then I begin to see a need to conform my life to look like him. Are you following me now? But if you do not see him, you don't have an idea of what you are supposed to be changed into. Hallelujah. So several believers in their honest and sincere pursuit for God are being changed into different things. And what we are becoming does not look like the Jesus that we are trying to be. So different teachings and revelations are molding us to become different things. Because the object, our reference point, we don't even know the kind of person we want to be like. Who is our standard, the reference, the Jesus? We preach about so many things. Yet the central focus, the one who we are supposed to be like, we don't have an idea and so every kind of teaching forms us to become like a prophet an apostle a member of so and so ministry are you following me now a member of so and so denomination because you become like whoever is your reference point hallelujah if all you have to see is your pastor you become like him you'll be very fortunate if your pastor is like christ then you become like Christ. But if your pastor is not like Christ, hallelujah. And it's important that in our attempt to press into the things of the spirit, see, the realm of the spirit is a very complicated realm. You can become anything. All you need to do is press. You want to be a herbalist, press. The method is the same. I mean, the requirements are almost the same. You want to learn how to still press. You want to know Satan more? Just press. So, as you press and say more of you, you suddenly enter a strange realm. And then you see many things that you can become like. And it's important to scan through. And several things will present pictures that represent success, greatness, achievement. You've got to drive them away and say, there's one I'm looking for. Give me a reference. The word of God has painted a picture that is in my mind. And you are nice, but you don't look like the reference. I can use you. You can guide me. But I do not see you being the reference. You are a good leader, but I do not see the reference in you. And suddenly, when the Holy Ghost helps you, you say, this is him. When Mary began to look for him, they were looking around. And when she found him, she said, Rabboni. She knew that he was the one. Are you following me now? So the first question tonight is who are you pressing to become like? Because we have molded ourselves in different fashions that in our sincere quest to love God we found ourselves becoming many things. Hallelujah. There is only one standard. That's why I started by reading. It says looking up to who? Joshua Selman, Koinonia, yourself, your pastor. No, no, I, I, I believe in the place of spiritual guidance. Are you following me now? But I am teaching you that for maximum transformation, this is the dynamics of real transformation. Let me tell you something, friends. The best of every man on this earth is still a man. Are you listening to me? The best of every man is still a man. looking up to jesus the author and the finisher of our faith our reference point our gauge the true standard hallelujah you look up to jesus to know what success should look like in the kingdom you look up to jesus to know what progress should look like in the kingdom you look up to jesus to know what fulfillment should be jesus christ is perfect theology he's the expression of the full intention of the father for every man when he came and walked upon the earth the bible says the word became flesh 
God needed to give us a reference so that we would pattern our lives after that reference. And so Jesus walked upon the earth and he exhibited all the attributes we are trying to exhibit. So if you want to be rich, by the time you become a millionaire, you look to Jesus. If what you have become doesn't look like who he is, you followed another way. And that means there's disaster. Are you following me now? If you want to be anointed, by the time you touch what you call anointing, and it does not look like what you see in Jesus Christ, then you know that you got something else. It says, looking. It didn't say wishing or dreaming. Looking. Set your gaze onto Jesus as you press. It says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and let us run so hebrews chapter 12 is talking about the race the pressing he said but hold on paul had told them run so many of them wanted to stand around and say hold on i need to let you know that as you are running and as you are pressing let your gaze be on jesus so that you will know you can appreciate your progress i follow me now you can know when when you are truly looking out to Jesus, you will know whether you are growing or not. Hallelujah. Paul said, My little children, in whom I travel until Christ be formed in you. And so it's our greatest desire to be with him, Koinonia. And the Holy Spirit is here to guide us and help us. When we stay in his presence then we become like him and then when we become like him we are empowered to reveal him in our world Emmanuel Emmanuel your name is called your name So it's our desire in this place that as God equips us for the glorious destiny he has for us as he equips us to represent him it's paramount that we understand that our goal is to be like Jesus the Bible makes us to understand that the apostles when they met Peter and he spoke at the Jerusalem council. They looked at him. And they said. We know this guy. This is a, an ordinary fisherman. But he had been with Jesus so much. That he was like him. When they went to Antioch. The people saw them and said. Remember there was a man. Who behaved like this. He loved people just like these people are loving. He healed the sick. Remember that man that was crucified. Don't you see him being reproduced? There's a soup opera that many of you like about a man whose spirit entered another man. What do we call it? Second chance. His spirit entered another man and he started behaving like him. Is that correct? So when the spirit that was in Jesus comes and begins to find expression in you, men begin to see that the closest expression to the Jesus I can see is you. How come your love life looks so close to what I see in the world? How come your understanding is similar? Every time I read, see, if, 
the people in your community read the Bible and they don't think about you, you don't look like Jesus. Because you should be the closest expression of everything they find. Colossians. Oh Lord, make us more like you. It's our desire. Make us more like you. Are you ready? Tonight the Lord is going to be walking on us very briefly. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to be walking on every one of us. God is building us, radically pruning us and bringing us to points where we truly become competent ambassadors to represent his government. Our goal is not just to get ourselves spiritually enlightened. Nobody has received an award for reading Genesis to Revelation. Nobody has received an award for criming scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. All those who have been loved by God are those who have dared to make the word of God seated in their spirits so much that they become like him. Church history is full of men and women who were the representation of Jesus in their generation. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3. And I read verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Verse 2. Set your affections. Such a powerful, if you're ever looking for a scripture that talks, I, I'm not done. I'm just stopping because the scripture is really touching me. If you're ever looking for a scripture that addresses true Christian character, and the life, the exemplary life of a believer, you find it in Colossians chapter 3 and 4. So for many of you who have been crying and say, God, walk upon my character, two chapters for you, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 4, have revealed the highest manifestations of Christian conduct. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. That's what we call carnality. That's what we call materialism. Setting your affections on things on the earth and not on things that are above where Christ is seated. Verse 3. For ye are dead and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. Verse 5. Now we begin. Mortify therefore your members. Listen, look up. I hope you know Paul was not speaking to unbelievers. Hallelujah. He wasn't speaking to unbelievers. He was speaking to men and women who were going to shake the cities. He said mortify, deaden. Let's read on. Your members which are upon the earth. Then he says fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection evil desire and covetousness which is idolatry for which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the sons of disobedience in the which ye once walked when ye lived in them but now put off all of this are you, are you there tonight God is going to be walking upon us as I, as I read the list, I'll not be doing too much of talking. Let the word of God speak. Some things will be flogging you from this scripture. It will rise out of this Bible and hit you. Some are already hitting me as it hits you. Yield to that hitting. Tonight is not the night where you pretend as though it's touching your neighbor. Because I will share and then we'll raise a cry. Are you listening to me? We want to truly represent the kingdom in its fullness. Let me tell you the proof that you are truly Christ-like is not when you heal the sick. If you have to pray in tongues for your community to know you are a Christian, you are not a real Christian. That every time they see you, you display at your default the attributes of the Christ life. There's nothing as beautiful as seeing the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit come upon a truly yielded life full of character an expression of the fullness of what Christ is did you know that your lifestyle affects people even more than your what you do on stage 
Hallelujah. There are certain people that respect you today, and especially for we ministers, not because of the sermon you preached. You truly represented Jesus at a very default state somewhere that you do not even know. There are many of you that are treasured and held in high esteem, not because you've healed any sick body. Hallelujah. The man we call um, the great evangelist, Billy Graham, it wasn't recorded that he had many manifestations of the spirit in his meeting if he had any at all we don't have records that he of course there will be pockets of miracles here and there but he didn't seem to in quote as we will put moving power you know have everybody lie down and say okay you know this and that but till today there's no president in america that doesn't go to pay homage whether he's a freemason whether he's born again what did that man show the world that compelled the united states of america to put it it was is almost a law there are certain people that seem to command the attention of their territories because they are the truest representation of christ has nothing to do with denomination has nothing to do with whether you are orthodox or pentecostal living faith cooking celestial church whatever it is that's not the issue hallelujah so let's read on this is koinonia we're becoming more like him hmm. are you there verse 8 put off all of these are you ready to hear the this now all right anger anger oh Put off these dear ambassadors of the most high those who want to represent him put off all of this yes you are anointed yes you can heal the sick yes you are prosperous you are a multi-millionaire but put off this anger wrath malice Come on, anointed people. Malice. Hallelujah. I hope you like this teaching tonight. Blasphemy. Filthy communications. Ha, look up. Channel O. And MTV. And all kinds of media programs have cultured the language of many people, including believers. And so, it's true that you are born again. You are serving in church. You are anointed. I mean, all you need to do is blow the... And you see people just moving around. But evil communication. Your communication has made people question the anointing upon your life. And people say, I cannot reconcile what I see on stage with what I see around. I can't reconcile it. And the Bible says, so that this thing will not corrupt your being an ambassador lay aside even filthy communication let's read on lie not to one another verse 9 ah! nigerians lie not to one another businessmen lie not to one another prospective politicians lie not to one another those who are seeking favor from different people lie not to one another hallelujah seeing that you have put off the old man the bible calls all of these the attributes of who the old man and we have so many new creation people i have been crucified with christ hallelujah but when you are shouting new creation this is part of it you must embrace the entirety of it you can't embrace prosperity and wealth and anointing and power and charisma and then you refuse to embrace this because it wasn't written in the old testament for many of you who have a serious problem with the old testament here's a nice scripture centered around the new testament hallelujah a woman called an around tree we are trying to get her books 
so that we'll stock it in the library within the gates and the priestly bride i like studying on people who have been to heaven i love it we all love it because after the bible they are the closest that can say things that i like we have many noise makers writing all kinds of books before they write the book they have calculated how much the profit is both upper limit and lower limit you do you really don't have a desire to bless the world and so we need did you notice that most if not all the people that go to heaven come back and write books free or audio I've, I've noticed this have you noticed that this is a trend when they come back to heaven they really don't want, even want to collect one naira i'm not saying you shouldn't let your ideas bless you so somebody is writing books now you say ah you have started with me no 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 write your book we'll buy it hallelujah but this woman was with jesus christ i mean literally in supernatural encounter we have a series that we'll be considering called supernatural encounters and we'll be playing some videos of men and women just like you and me who have walked some paths and realms where we're watching something uh today in our house on a man who is transported by the spirit you know philip's airways many of you call it we have real men who are doing philip's airways not not imitation by our traditional people isn't that interesting and the guy said the lord told him that a time will come we will need it hallelujah a time will come when they refuse to give us visas we say all right have a nice day i need to be at the airport in the next five minutes how about that if you don't believe this you can have a nice day honestly because this is we are training you to become this so if you have a problem with this mindset the lord is helping us in jesus name and this woman was with jesus christ throughout 2005 can you imagine throughout 2005 she was with jesus christ every day you know when i hear stories like this i feel ashamed of what i know that i call revelation because when they asked this woman i had to, I, I still have it i believe my laptop her interview with sidroth is supernatural and you know what this woman said when they asked her sidroth was asking and said why don't you love why did you ask him about power miracles the revival coming guess what she said she said i'm not interested ah joshua he stung me up me that have been pressing oh god reveal the seventh dimension of power here is a woman who has been with jesus for one solid years she has become so much like him that her priorities have radically changed if your priorities do not change in the presence of god you're not really changing hallelujah and now let me quote this woman she she said when she was in heaven she saw she entered a room and she saw the saints of old and the angels they were mapping out the strategy for the revival that is coming hallelujah so she was invited they invited several generals who pioneered the ancient revivals and were asking them what were some of the challenges why did some revivals get corrupted I follow me now and one of the issues that this woman raised was the issue of character many people corrupted these revivals hallelujah and so god is communicating to the entire fivefold ministry that while you are opening people up that's why we have miracle services we have time for impartation but as you receive the anointing on one side when you are about to run and say you see how much i'll make you in one month with this money as you're running god will hold your leg and say come back you have not finished reading it not too fast many of us are saying god give me this power and see all these millionaires people are suffering investment give me power but just one i know somebody that I can go and pray for a senator immediately is healed i'll tell him as you are healed collect uh, my bank account number hallelujah corruption and the man who is praising god suddenly begins to question you how many of you have been to a meeting and after a nice and powerful sermon they just begin to do funny things on stage that just kills your spirit you were so blessed i mean these people represented jesus christ so much and later on you see somebody with manasseh will just come and whisper something i'll say it's okay i'll address that and then as the air I mean celebrating miracles suddenly funny things begin to happen so i go and manipulate jamfa 
and I say, Jamfa, just look straight. There's one rich man there. And because he has the gift of the prophetic, it will work. Are you hearing me? Oh, yes, it will work. Let me tell you, if we hold every one of you here, I can tell you everything about your lives as the Holy Spirit grants grace. That's the dangerous thing about the anointing. Hallelujah. All we need to do is tear up the atmosphere and begin to pass mics around ourselves. And you will see the accurate delivery of the word of God. But what happens? As I'm prophesying it, you, you follow this way and wait for me. See, let me tell you. Don't laugh about this. The judgment of God is falling strong upon the church. And God will prune and sanitize everything until we become a perfect bride. A true bride that can represent him. Hallelujah. And so, a man gives a very pretty lady like this. A wonderful word of knowledge. You see the anointing walking. And suddenly, the remaining unrenewed part of his makeup just looks at her and ah. now this lady is already kneeling down because he gave her a powerful word your name is Gladys no, this, I know her so it's not a word of knowledge <laughs> hallelujah and I know you your father is, and she says yes yes sir she says, ah, you want to know more follow me you just leave and, and then says please tell me more about my life and then he says alright I'll give you time just get my number when are we truly going to represent Christ in a manner that will compel the world to know that there is something about this Christianity? Let me tell you, if it's only miracles who used to change the world, we are going to be in trouble because voodoo is warming up. Are you listening to me? Confucius, you need to go to Asia and then you'll be home. You know all these manifestations we do and shout? I tell you the truth, they'll cross their legs and stare at you like this. Because when you go there to visit a man, as you enter his room, you see him hanging on the air. Have you, had, have you gotten to that dimension? I'm saying it will take more than the gifts of the Spirit. Are you following me? There's a place for that. The world will see miracles. Hallelujah. But I'm saying it takes more than that. What if everybody in your environment is healed? What else will you do? How else will you represent Christ? We have so many men of God. Nice people. But then later you go and you just bribe in the office. It's on your table. All kinds of evil activities happen. And the Bible is saying for you to be a true ambassador. You must be. There's no escaping. There must be a thorough washing. Hallelujah. So that who you are. On stage and before people is who you truly are in the secret when you get to that point you are truly you are practically and experientially entered the dimension the Bible calls holiness hallelujah can I preach this please and then we raise a cry and pray because it will not profit us completely if all we do is just worship him and give him all the praise and you know all of us because we are praying in the spirit and you know the wonderful thing about the things of God is that when you operate a particular law of the spirit you will get the results so as you pray in tongues and you are diligent studying the word what happens your spirit is being trained so you are anointed you come and stand and all you need to do is begin to pray in tongues and you see this dense presence of God but as that is happening what happens lack of character begins to arise that's why Paul said, I keep my body. This body is stubborn. You must keep it. Part of your ministry is to keep it. Hallelujah. Let's read on. Lie not to one another, seeing that you have put off the old man and his deeds, and have put on the new one, man, which is renewed in the knowledge. The word there is not renewed. The word there is being renewed. Hallelujah. In knowledge after the image of him that created him verse 12 put on look up the Bible first told us what to put off you see the difference between Jesus Christ and our false prophets they tell you the problem but they never tell you the solution 
Say there's somebody. What is the solution? Put off all of these things that do not give a true picture of who Jesus Christ is. How many unbelievers have backslided because we have misrepresented Christ in our social environment? Hallelujah. I once took a bus with a pastor some years ago and we were going somewhere for a crusade. And I was chartering a car so I decided, I told him, come and let's ride together. And while we were riding, we got somewhere and wanted to enter and um, they had blocked the place. They needed us to turn and it would be a whole walk. And when it was time to turn, I mean, the driver was about to turn and the security man said no. The pastor just spoke through the mirror and conjured one lie. Ah, I was, I sat back in my mind. I said, God, you know I love you. I really love you. When we finished, he looked at me and then he smiled. See, the difference between an unbeliever and a believer is that when you trespass the principles of God, the Holy Ghost, you feel the check in you. When you get to a point where you are comfortable with misrepresenting Christ, you need a retreat. Quick. Quick. Whatever it is that you're doing, you need a radical retreat alone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We must be thoroughly washed. We want the power of the Holy Ghost. We want the anointing. Many of us want to stand on the stage and have people come and hear you. Hear me, brother. If you're not thoroughly walked upon, the anointing that comes on you can kill you. You know, we like anointing. And you just pack it, see that, say, Manasseh, I need all the grace upon your life. Not so, my brother. Not in this revival that is coming. There are some things that you don't get by impartation. You walk it by your diligence and intimacy with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let's read up quickly because I really want us to pray. And I understand there will soon be a program in the church. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Are you ready now? Tender mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, patience or long suffering. He said forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as christ forgave you do what if any man has a quarrel ladies even as christ forgave you do what above all these things put on what love which is the bond of perfectness let the peace of god rule your hearts to which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful verse 16 let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord the last verse and whatever ye do in word or deed do it in the name of the lord jesus christ giving thanks to god and the father by him there is need for us and let me tell you something this is what i love about the orthodox circle you see let me say something let's assume this is orthodox and this is pentecostal stroke charismatic are you following me now the orthodox circle have done a great job in mastering the place of true christian character and morality that's why some of us who came from the orthodox background before getting filled with the holy spirit the remnant of that training still remains in us I follow me now and so many orthodox circles have rejected the side of the anointing I follow me now at the ministry of the Holy Spirit and they argue about tongues argue about all of this and live under the law and do all kinds of things but one thing I can tell you is that in many orthodox circles when someone is sick the next 12 20 30 minutes you see people rushing to come and greet him you hardly find that in Pentecostal circles we always like celebrating when you buy a new car we can come to your house but when somebody is dead ah you are not supposed to die who wants to identify that's why in many Pentecostal circles when their members die they send them back to the mother church they say go and bury them but when it's time to get married or celebrate a new post what happens I am your pastor 
Are you getting blessed? Ah, tonight's message. The Lord help us. Hallelujah. And so, both the Pentecostals and the Orthodox circles, they are not wrong. Both of them are incomplete. The revelations of Christ are complementary, not supplementary. Are you following me? Supplementary means you can replace one for another. The holiness movement was not a wrong movement. The word of faith movement was not a, a wrong movement. Are you following me now? The charismatic movement at Sousa Street was not wrong. But the trouble is when we section out a movement and base our entire lives on it, we find out that we are missing on other ingredients that are meant to give us complete preparation. So we have men and women who are very holy and contrite. And the world can attest to the fact that we love God. But then the sick come and they keep getting sick. People are poor. People are not living the lives they are supposed to live. And then we have on one side manifestations of the spirit. Wheelchairs and all kinds of things. But when you talk about disorderliness and lawlessness, you still find it there. Hallelujah. And you see all kinds of things. Disorderliness. There must be a sense of decorum and maturity a level of character and furnishment that the spirit of god brings in us hallelujah that's the reason why god is building us and equipping us so that we are not only anointed but we truly can represent him have you seen some people you always let me tell you the more you become like christ the more you are well favored everyone wants to be around you hallelujah have you seen some people every time they come around you you don't know when you have removed something to sow into their lives or every time they come you seem to respect them you may be older than them but there's a carriage of his presence you see the character of the spirit you do something they are supposed to swallow you up and when you come they tell you it's all right i can't pretend i'm not angry but it's all right and you're like what kind of person is this until your life shocks your community such that they can say what kind of person are you some years ago the holy spirit asked me to draw a graph and write the fruit of the spirit versus their manifestation in my life and i was walking in power raw power when i wrote it i was i was disappointed to the core a lot of people say josh you're a nice person oh you are gentle you are this when I plotted that graph, I received grace to, I don't know if I tore the paper or not, but it stung my ego. Because I said, okay, God, so where is the ambassador? Hallelujah. I choose to represent him in his entirety. I choose to represent him that the same testimony that is given about me on stage should be the same testimony anywhere. You know, I, I always share this, and let me say it. I was in a bus one time going to Sabo. Hallelujah. And in that bus, there was an elderly woman. Then there was a the very little boy, the conductor. And he was shouting and just insulting everyone in the car. You know, you talk and you talk back and yell back. And there was this elderly woman. And I think she wanted them to reduce the price or something. And this boy would not let this woman rest. He was just shouting and murmuring and... At a point, I got agitated in my spirit. I said, can you imagine this boy? This, is, this woman is old enough to be his grandmother. And he's shouting. And my old man wanted to just give this guy a dirty slap. And suddenly, the Holy Spirit put me in check. And then, when it was time for me to pay the bus fare, he said, ah, uh, someone has paid. When I turned back, I saw one e and member. I said, God, thank you. You know how to cover for our weaknesses we'll explain later on how many of you have corrupted the things god is doing in your life by certain attributes don't tell me it does not matter are you listening to me don't let anybody preach any gospel to you that true christian character and conformity to the christ-like life does not matter it does 
Oh yes it does. When you are truly conformed to the life of Christ. Then you find out God can trust you. God can bring more ladies for you guys. So that you counsel them. Because he knows that there will not be need for an emergency meeting in heaven. Hallelujah. God can bring money. God can bring money or something and trust you and make you a millionaire. And know that there will not be an emergency meeting in heaven trying to manage what you have become. Looking on to Jesus. Looking on to Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. I call us tonight to a point where we begin to re-examine our character. There are certain languages that should not be found among believers. Hallelujah. And many of us use them carelessly and we are very happy about that. Immediately you finish using the words, you say, oh, Jerry, let's pray. And someone is just looking at you. And then you tell the person, I think you need the baptism. You say, me, if the baptism will make me like what I'm seeing, I'm not interested. Hallelujah. God is raising and training leaders. You know why I'm saying this? Because God is going to be committing ministries into our hands. God is going to be committing wealth to our hands. There are many people that when God blesses today, little financial prosperity, everybody around you becomes a slave. They must lick your leg and then we claim we are acknowledging God. God is bringing us to a point where we truly let our lives become windows. So on one side, you heal the sick, cast out devils and manifest the workings of the gifts of the spirit and then on another side men see you full of the christ-like life that they come and visit you when they bump into your house without invitation you will not need to arrange certain things and say where are these videos jerry yes, stay back then you just bring up any him there is need for the manifestation of the christ-like and let me tell you something there are two groups of people in this place. Those who say, why did I come this night for this program? I will be coming for a miracle service where there is no much preaching. Or those who say, Lord, I contend for transformation. I contend for transformation. I, I contend for transformation. That's why many of you, God has delayed you from running. He has told you what he wants you to do. You wonder why you are not ready. On your mark set set has been for years where will go come when you hear this message and conform to it hallelujah as a lady everybody looks at you and they are seeing you very nice and pretty doing your hair and the guy just looks at you and says, these are the kind of church girls that look like indisciplined ladies so the guy sags his jeans misrepresenting his maker and bouncing and coming and then begins to smoke in front of you and speak nonsense and says oh queen now, really <laughs> hallelujah he comes to you thinking you are so cheap and he can go away with you then when he comes you get two chairs and sit him down and begin to expound scriptures more perfectly by the end of that exposition you either say two things i repent or all right i'll see you later you say what of my number i said no thank you the true testimony of, about your life is not supposed to be heard among believers but unbelievers only unbelievers have the right to attest to the fact that you are living a christ-like life or not and as god gave me this message to prepare i felt like dying because I said, God, why do you give me messages that will flog me first on stage? As I'm preaching right now, I know the areas God is saying, when you finish, let's go and do our own. Finish your delivery. How many of us have seen the need to cry unto God and say, Lord, I need to conform. I've been looking up to many things. And I've been gauging my progress based on aberrations and things that are not Christ. But we must come to a point where we align hallelujah 
looking up to Jesus the Bible says put off malice bitterness don't say I was born like that all of us are like that in our family you step on my show I match you and give you a piece of my mind and go back to sleep that's how I am I'm that kind of person then you must change because the Bible says therefore if any man is in Christ he's a new creation but you must press that's why we worship him as you worship him you find out that the miracles you need in your life are not just bodily you need certain radical levels of transformation let me tell you something the more you are conforming to Christ the more they want to make you a leader everywhere in your department in your faculty there are many of you who just see someone who will come and say sorry is there something I can do for you I want to help you wash your clothes you wonder why they are seeing something in you let the weight of your glory cover us let the light of your river flow let the truth of your kingdom presence as a gift and you will be a living carrier of his divine presence every time you step into a place there is something about your life demons will attest to the fact that you are a true ambassador unbelievers even if they don't get born again whenever you step into a place you dilute that atmosphere and they change their confession to accommodate your presence in that environment that when they are trying to bribe the moment you step in if it's for three hours you make every unbeliever uncomfortable in that place until you step out at that point men can truly see Jesus in your life and it won't be too long one day they'll say what is it about your life I know it's not about your words I, I see that you represent love how come you love so much i thought you just used to fake it on stage but now i truly see that the love is in you how come you give so much i thought you're just trying to look for a name but i found out that is truly your nature how come you're so patient in a wicked world of impatience how come you're so tolerant these are the qualities that will make you anything in this life they have an attracting power they will compel anything to you a combination who will not want to be with a man who or a woman who loves who is patient who is tolerant we're discussing one day with Ejimi and he said something he said when competence meets humility is fearful when a man who is competent and then he decides to be humble it's very painful it will inconvenience everybody and it will set a compulsory standard because when you see people who are better than you and you see them walking in humility are you seeing why ministers are supposed to really be an example because when people look at your life they cannot deny the grace and the workings of the spirit then they see the humility of the spirit they see the love of the spirit they are compelled to follow you as you follow Christ. Paul said, follow me even as I follow Christ. 
Hallelujah. And tonight we are going to cry. Tonight is that night when we are going to forgive all the people we have been holding for ages. Hello? Father, mother, sister, brother, till I die. No, you, you will not die. But today you will let go. Are you following me now? Today is that day when you will cry and say, Lord, this bitterness ends. I can't be looking at my brother. I'm anointed. Tonight is the night. We are going to raise a cry. And let me tell you something. Make this a real cry. That's why we came tonight. This is part of koinonia. Tonight we are going to be reaching certain conclusions and say, Lord, forever my life will represent love. Forever my life. When we have this, we will stop having broken homes. Are you listening to me? We will stop having all kinds of challenges in our companies, in our ministries. We need to be more like Christ. In the anointing and the manifestation of the Spirit. The same Spirit that produces the outworkings of grace and power is the same Spirit that brings in character. Rise up on your feet. Bless God for tonight's teaching. The making of leaders. The making of champions. Maybe a hard message. But it's part of the requirements to be a true ambassador. Go ahead and raise a cry. Shata kapariya de kalaba kosotai. Le kapariya da basanda da bariya da dash. For every one of us, born of a woman in this place, there is need to cry tonight. Beginning from myself, there's something, an attribute of the flesh that we need to lay aside and pick up something tonight is not the night to talk about anointing we are not talking about power we are all great men and women in this place unforgiveness bitterness all of these things that cripple the manifestations go ahead raise a cry raise a cry from your spirit we want to present a perfect portrait a perfect representation we want to be true ambassadors living epistles testimonies we want to let the world see Jesus in reality lost corruption all kinds of the workings of the flesh go ahead and raise a cry don't let the devil deceive you and say this does not concern you every ambassador in this place should raise a cry for the sake of his majesty for the sake of his glory make sure you are praying you are talking to the Lord and say Lord I have healed the sick many have seen manifestations of the spirit I can't deny that I'm anointed I can't deny that I'm gifted I can't deny it but something about my life keeps betraying your kingdom and tonight is that night I lay it aside draw me close to you that's a song of surrender tonight never let me go say Lord I lay it I lay it all down I lay from your spirit you are my desire no one and nothing will do tell him Lord nothing can take your place dethrone every idol dethrone every habit dethrone every 
addiction. The power of God is present to set men free. Tell him, Lord, help me. That's a cry tonight. Help me. Help me find a way. Bring me back. We're coming back. We're coming back. We're coming back. No matter how far you have gone. Represent the kingdom out of your life. Are you listening to me? Instrumentalists, play your best. Clash the cymbal as we pray. Prayer point number one. We are going to pray and say, Lord, I lay aside lust. Enough is enough. I lay aside lust once and for all by the Spirit of God. As you make that confession, the ability of the Spirit is there to help you. I lay aside bitterness, pride, and arrogance. I lay it aside. Don't let the devil condemn you. God will never condemn you. God will not condemn you. He's building you. Anytime you sense condemnation, cast it. It comes from Satan. Go ahead and cry. To be a real ambassador. Raise a cry. All over this building. Raise a cry in your spirit. Say, Lord, I repent. Bitterness. Unforgiveness. Malice. Rage. Rebellious heart. Stubborn heart. You want the things of God. Oh, we raise a cry. Aleke parata likeba. Rakata manarabas. Come on, pray. Brothers and sisters, you're before the God of heaven. Raise a cry. He knows your heart. He knows your weaknesses. And he's here to help you. He's not condemning you. There is grace to help you.
Jesus. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no one. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. your neighbor we are going to be praying Galatians chapter 5 we need our world to see Jesus in his entirety in our lives we are not indisciplined people we love the Lord and we respect his government we have a king and we have a kingdom we have values and we live by those values Galatians chapter 5. I'll read it once. As soon as I read it, worshippers go ahead and just worship and we'll pray it. But the fruit of the Spirit 
in other words the fruit that the Holy Ghost manifests through a recreated human spirit is love joy peace long suffering not short suffering patience it's called gentleness gentleness don't tell me I was born that way gentleness goodness faith meekness self control self control anything cannot be yes any road is not the road self control are you ready to pray and say Lord as I step into new dimensions I want to see a rich manifestation of all of these things go ahead and begin to pray my life manifests the love go ahead and pray my life is a manifestation of the love of God the love of God the love of God the peace of God reigns in my heart the peace of God reigns in my heart the peace of peace lives in me the peace of peace lives in me oh I'm patient I'm patient I cast out every impatience I am patient make sure you are praying take this seriously don't look at your neighbor pray I am gentle in the name of Jesus I am gentle the workings of gentleness is manifested through my life the goodness of the Lord is being manifested through my life the goodness of God make sure you are praying there's grace for you as you pray Faithful. I am faithful. I speak it into my life. I am faithful in the name of Jesus. I am meek, humble in mind, humble in heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus, every seed of pride in me, I cast it away. In the name of the Lord Jesus. A glorious this is true that God is we know you as a miracle worker. God is you know what a miracle is a miracle is an interruption of the normal course the normal cause of things the way they usually should be. It was God that made the laws and it is within his power to create a system around and above it. Truly speaking, God is a miracle worker. A miracle happens when an act of God comes to defy the natural laws, the natural cause of things. And that's what will happen to somebody tonight. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me start tonight by reminding us that God is a miracle worker. He is a wonder-working God. It is wonderful to know that He is love. It's wonderful to know that He's the Lamb. It's wonderful to know that He can be friend. In fact, it's wonderful to know that based on our oneness, the Bible even identifies Him as brother. But there is a dimension of God that we need tonight. As a miracle worker, a wonder-working God. Zephaniah chapter 3, please, and verse 17. The Bible reminds us that the Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. Not just the Lord who is seated on the throne. The Lord who is in the midst of ye. He has come as a mighty God. And as a result, he will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. In Psalm 62 and verse 11. Psalm 62 and verse 11. The Bible says, God has spoken once. Say, Amen. It says, twice have I heard this, that how many? Power belong unto God. Power belongs unto God. Once have I spoken, twice have you heard, that when it has to do with power, it belongs to God. Not God and someone else. Not God and colleagues. Not God and other demons. Power exclusively belongs to God. Hallelujah. These two scriptures establish the fact that God is a miracle worker and God is a wonder working God. But you see, the way God walks among men is that He walks through men. Please listen. He walks His wonders, His signs, His marvelous acts through men. He has chosen that system. As an act of his power, as an act of his intelligence, that as mighty as he is, he has chosen to reveal his power through men. That means that if there are not available vessels, a territory may not seem to witness the kind of power that scripture proposes that God has. That does not mean that he does not have the power. It means the vessels who can give him allowance to find expression may not be there so when it has to do with the lifting of men it takes the mighty god and yielded vessels the mighty god and yielded vessels the mighty god and yielded vessels not necessarily powerful vessels the mighty god and yielded vessels if you leave the mighty god alone men will not be able to see his power It takes the mighty God in partnership with yielded vessels. The formula is the spirit and the bride say come. The spirit can say come. But if there is no bride on earth saying come, there will be no manifestation. The spirit can say be healed if the bride does not echo it to say be healed. Ezekiel said, I prophesied as I was commanded. When God spoke, the bones did not obey. It was until a man echoed what God had said, then the bones began to move. This is how it works. God was already speaking, prophesy to these bones. And yet the bones kept quiet as though they did not hear God. But when the yielded vessel repeated what God said, the Bible says there was a sound. So God is a miracle worker. He's a wonder walking God, but he walks through men. Are we together? Isaiah chapter 62, please, from verse 1 to 8. Be patient and follow patiently. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof Go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. It says, And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Say amen. Amen. Verse 3 says, Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, 
Ah, may this be a prophetic word for someone tonight. That in the name of Jesus, thou shall no more be termed forsaken. Neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. Verse 5. For as a young man married a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiced over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have said, now watch this. He tells them everything that he's going to do. This is what I can do. This is what I want to do. This is what I am able to do. But there is a limitation until this is fulfilled. To that end, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, he says, keep not silence. Uh -huh. And give him no rest till he establish, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. He says, the Lord has sworn by his hand and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat to thy enemies. And the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine for which thou hast labored. But, he says, to make this a possibility in your life, I have set watchmen and I have mandated those people, don't be silent. Bring your petitions before heaven. Give authorization to heaven. Even as mighty as God is, He has so designed His system such that if there is a mighty God and no yielded vessels, the land will remain barren. It takes God and yielded men, not powerful men. The, the men look powerful because His power flows through them. The mighty God and yielded vessels Many people focus on the mighty God. But then they forget that his power flows through yielded vessels. In 2 Kings chapter 6. Let's look at this. There's a story that I want to use to establish a lesson. And then we allow the Holy Spirit to just move. 2 Kings chapter 6. We'll begin our reading from verse 25 for sake of time. 25. The Bible says, And there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they beside it, and an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver. Can you imagine that level of poverty? And the fourth part of a cab of a dove's dung for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, please listen to this for God's sake, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king. And he said, I love the king. I'm not sure that the king acknowledged the God of heaven, but I loved his understanding. This already is a message for someone before we continue. He said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? That means we have a wine press in this kingdom and we have a storehouse. But if God does not authorize the help, our wine presses and our barns, our bank accounts and everything remain useless until God helps. That means whatever you have on earth is only useful when God has really helped you from the realm of the spirit. The king is saying, I am king. But I can do nothing if the God of heaven does not authorize help for you. Next verse. And the king said unto her, What ailed thee? Now listen to this interesting story. And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today. And we will eat my own son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Now that we have eaten your own son, we are still hungry. Give me your own son that we may eat him. And she had hid her son. This is not a parable. That once upon a time on earth, people were so poor 
that a woman looked around, no animals, and she looked at her son, that she stayed nine months to have him, and said, you know what, son, I love you, but we're about negotiating your destiny. They boiled one whole son, and two women ate the son. By the next day, they wanted to boil the other one. And then the other woman remembered, no, no, no. I went through too much to have this child. And she ran away. That was the subject of controversy. The Bible says, when the king heard the words of the woman, he rent his clothes. And he passed upon the wall. And the people looked and behold, he had sackcloth upon his flesh. What a responsible king. What... What are you ruling when all the children are being eaten by their mothers? And he said, God do so and more to me. If the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him on this day. He was angry because he was smart enough to know. Listen carefully. There is a lesson for us to learn here. The king knew that this God they talk about, I don't know him, but I know he's not that wicked. If he has not moved, there is a yielded vessel who has refused to allow this happen. And the king was right. The king did not blame God. He said, there is someone who is responsible for the salvation of these people. I will look for him and remove his head for not cooperating. Next verse. But Elisha sat in his house. And the elder sat with him. And the king sent a man from before him. Ah, oh, but look at the power of prophecy. But ere the messenger came to him and said to the elder, See ye how this son of a murderer has sent to take away my head. He says, Look, when the messenger cometh, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. Is it not the sound of his master's feet behind him? And while... He yet talked with them. Behold, the messenger came down unto him and said, Behold, this evil is of the Lord. What should I wait for the Lord any longer? They were angry. And Elisha said, The mighty God and the yielded vessel, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. God is saying, but I'm the one who is echoing it to you. It says, Tomorrow, about this time shall a measure of flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Now, 7 verse 2. This is the lesson that I'm praying the devil will not let anyone be a victim of this. It says, Then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, because you have said this, thou shalt see it with your eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. So, let's establish what we are dealing with here. It starts by saying, when you read the text before that, King Ben-Hadad came and, you know, fought Samaria, and then the Bible records that Samaria now became victims of war and there was famine. And women were boiling their children all around and eating their children. And then the king gets angry, sends a message. And the prophet now says, you know what? God has spoken by this time tomorrow. This entire famine will cease to a point where you have food in abundance. And when he said that, the king said, I mean the one who... The king would lean on said, even if God will open the windows of heaven, there is something about pain and prolonged situations that are negative. They can begin to deflate how far you think God can go as far as his might is concerned. You can start reducing your standards as far as what you know God can do. Lord, this is what I trust you for. But now, I think it's, it's like you can't go that far. So just, just whatever it is you can do for me. And the king said, Elisha said, because you have said this, you will see it and yet not eat of it. Next verse. Now, I want you to pay attention to how the miracle happened. Because there is a lesson here to learn also. And this is what will be happening over someone's life this night. God 
speaks that he's bringing redemption not to an individual not to a family not to a community but to an entire land now the prophet the yielded vessel now declares it let me show you what happens the moment a word comes from god and is accurately declared to men miracles begin to happen the spirit of the living god watch this there were no available men and god found four leprous men you see i told you that when it has to do with god you don't need to be powerful all it needs is for you to be yielded you cannot associate power with four leprous men as far as bringing a harvest to a territory is concerned and there were four leprous men at the entering of the gate and they said to one another why sit we here till we die please look up do you realize that these men what was moving them to start becoming dissatisfied was this they were under the influence of that prophecy they had been there but they said you know what let's not sit here till we die little did they know the same way you felt why sit at home can i just come for koinonia you thought you were just coming and your neighbor who would not come say can i go with you you didn't know that a word was already sent that this is your season of lifting this is your season of encounter next verse please keep that scripture for us the bible says and they rose up in the twilight to go to the camp of the syrians and when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp ay, 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 behold there was no man there what happened for the lord back to that lord again all power belongs to the lord for the lord had made the host of the syrians to hear a sound of a noise of chariots and a noise of horses even the noise of a great host look at what god is doing here and they said to one another lo the king of israel had hired against us the king of the hittites the king of the egyptians who told them it's a terrible thing when God is against you. Anything can fight you. Anything can fight you when God is against you. Four leprous men. Ladies and gentlemen, we are intelligent people. If, even if agile men, even if Olympians are running, if you are in this auditorium, you can't hear their sound. As soon as those guys began to walk, the Bible said that these people just had. And they started even suggesting the nation that were hired. The Hittites, the Egyptians to come to us. Verse 7. Wherefore, they arose and fled at twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink. Do you know what it means to have this kind of breakthrough as a leper? Nobody is fighting you, no oppression, nobody is pushing you and saying, unclean, unclean, you wait till we eat. You know that was the custom then? They would push them away. And when they carried silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it, and they came again, and they entered into another tent. Everybody say, prepared blessings. And carried tents also. And went and hid it. Verse 9. They said something to themselves that God is telling some of you. And they said to one another, We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings. And we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come, that we may go and tell the king. That means we can't enjoy this alone. We have seen the power and the grace of God, but remember we have relatives too. Remember we have other people who need this miracle. So they came and called unto the porter of the city and told them saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man, but horses tied, asses tied, tents as they were. And he called the porters, and they told to the king. They told it to the king's house within. Uh -huh. And the king arose in the night and said unto the servants, I will now show you what the Syrians have done unto us. You see the king. 
There is a way that God will bless you. You will think it's a lie. You will still not trust the blessing. This is what is happening. The king said, I am smart. These guys are not that weak. It's an ambush. They know that we be hungry. Therefore, are they gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, when they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. And one of the servants answered and said, let some take, I pray thee, five of the horses that remain, which are left in the city. Behold, they are as all the multitudes of Israel that are left in it. Behold, I say, they are even as the multitudes of the Israelites that are consumed, and let us send and see. Now watch this. They took therefore two chariot horses, and the king sent after the host of the Syrians, saying, Go and see. Be patient. And they went after them unto Jordan, and lo, all the way was full of garments and vessels, which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. And the messengers returned and told the king, and the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Egyptians. So the, a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. We're still reading. And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate. And the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died as the man of God said, who spoke when the king came down to him. Please look up. There is a very powerful lesson here. God speaks through a yielded vessel and he says, by this time tomorrow, so and so would happen. And an intelligent man comes logically. You would think God will forgive him and say they've suffered. There is, I mean, don't blame the man. The prophet said you will see it and you will not eat of it. They now made him in charge of it. And while he was trying to push people, let's be orderly here. They matched him. You don't act like that with hungry people. These guys have not eaten. Women who were boiling their children. And here is a man who already the curse of the Lord is upon him. Standing at the gate and they matched him and killed him there. They didn't even know he was dead. Everybody was passing to go and eat. God is a mighty God. He can not only save individuals and families, he can save cities and nations in one day. If this were a parable, the Bible would tell us it was a parable. A day came upon this earth. This event actually happened. Hallelujah. God walks through men. God is mighty, but his almightiness the fullness of the potential of his power is only seen when there are yielded vessels. Please take note. It is not as though God is limited. God is all-powerful. But, if you do not find yielded vessels, God will seem to look weak. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. Hosea 12 and verse 13. Here's what the Bible says. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Who brought them out of Egypt? No prophet can bring people out of Egypt. It is the Lord. But it happens by a prophet. Nobody has the power to heal. You can't just speak to someone who is holding crutches with their legs broken. And says, throw that thing and start walking. No, no. That kind of power is not given to men on their own. However, by a prophet, the Lord, the Lord can stand behind an individual as weak as you are, as powerless as you may seem, as incapable as you may seem. But when he stands behind you, ah, everything becomes possible when he holds your head. Impossible becomes possible when you hold my hand. Everything becomes possible when you hold my hand. Impossible becomes possible. Ladies and gentlemen, do not ask how God will visit you tonight. 
That's not a wise question. Mary said, how shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? He said, no, that is not your realm. Yours is to believe. The dynamics of its manifestation. God is like a movie director. He can use anything to make his word come to pass. And by a prophet, please back to that scripture. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he, his Israel, preserved. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20, popular scripture. This is your own assignment tonight. Second Chronicles 20 and verse 20. The Bible says, And they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. He says, Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. So there are two entities to believe. Number one, and in order of priority, you must believe the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, the almighty and all powerful. You owe it to believe him. But in addition to believing him, you must believe the vessel that he uses. Believe in the Lord. Believe his prophets. You can believe his prophets and not believe in the Lord. That is idolatry. You can believe in the Lord and not believe in his prophets. Your answer will remain in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. I assure you your answer will remain in the realm of the spirit. And that's not where you need it. If you believe in his prophets more than you believe in the Lord, you are already practicing witchcraft and idolatry. In order of priority, you must believe in the Lord. But... You will not believe in the Lord God. You must believe in the Lord your God. This is my message tonight. Pay attention. The Lord that you must believe in must be your God for it to work. You cannot believe in the Lord one creator somewhere. <clears throat> the Lord that produces this kind of result for you must be the Lord who has become your God. He is Lord, but is he your God? You are my God. This is not a general thing. You are my God. Listen, you can believe in the Lord, the God that your mother worships, that you have refused to surrender your life to. You can believe in the Lord your God, the one you had one zealous preacher talking about tonight. Before you even see all the miracles, he wants to be the Lord, but he wants to also be your God. Many people believe he is the Lord, but they are not interested in having him become their God. In this kingdom, when it has to do with exploits and results, it is the people that do know they are God. Not God, they are God. There is a relationship component to exploits. Your God. How can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. No way. How can I bow down before you and then bow down before a man? No Because you are my God. Tonight, you have come to the Lord. Whether you believe Him or not, He is still Lord. The earth is the Lord's. Listen, there are four conditions for anyone to be called Lord over a territory according to psalm 24 and verse 1 psalm 24 and verse 1 gives us the litmus test if we must call you lord there must be four things that you must own number one the earth 
Number two, the resources, the fullness. Number three, you must control the mind system. The mind control system. And number four, the inhabitants. If you own the land and you don't own the resources, you are not Lord. You must own the earth, the physical environment. Number two, you must have dominion over the resources within that territory. Number three, you must control the mind of the people. By control, that means that it is your values that influence the thinking of the people. And then number four, you must have influence over the inhabitants there. This also is the principle of territorial dominion. If you want to take over a territory for Jesus, please keep that scripture there. This must be the four things you look for. Dominion over land. Dominion over the resources within that territory. Dominion over the mind control systems. And influence over the inhabitants. That territory is over. Whoever wields control over the land, the resources, the mind control system, and the inhabitants is Lord. This is all Satan looks for. When Satan comes to a territory, he wants to empower men who would own physical land. Because there is a dimension of faith and dominion that is tied to land. This is for another day. So we know that he is Lord because he owns the earth. He owns the resources. The Bible says the cattle on a thousand hills even belong to him. The mind control system and they that dwell therein, they all belong to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we together? Yes. So, if you believe in the Lord, the mighty God of heaven, and then you believe in his servants, the Bible clearly tells you that you have fulfilled the condition that makes for possibilities. Most people, listen carefully, most people believe in the Lord, but he has not become their God. You may be seated here, all across and following online you came to church you're welcome and that is wonderful and even commendable but this lord who is a miracle worker within a few minutes from now we're going to be celebrating the triumph of light over darkness the triumph of the power of god over mundane principalities and powers God himself will flaunt his glory once again in the midst of his people. He's going to be signing a signature like Julius Berger will build. And if you are saying who built it, there you will see a big B there. God is about to do something and sign his signature upon your life. That everyone who sees cannot say this is your boss. No, this cannot be your boss. This cannot be your mother-in-law. This cannot be some politician somewhere. This one is God. But hear me. You can receive miracles tonight. You can celebrate what God is doing. Following across the nations of the earth. You can receive all kinds of things and live. And if they ask you, who healed you? You can tell them, the Lord. If they ask you, who lifted you from this dungeon? Who broke this age-long captivity? But for us, we will not just say the Lord. I will say he is the Lord, my God. I can introduce you to him. If you tell them the Lord, you don't have a relationship with him to extend his power to others. You should not just stop as the Lord. He must become your God. He is my God and his name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. You're my king and your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Listen, you've heard me share it here, believers. Listen, when you go to a herbalist, when you go to some kind of necromancer or one who manipulates the realm of the spirit, 
in an attempt to provide solutions. Did you know that he does not need a relationship with you? You don't even need to know his name. How many native doctors have given their names to people? They don't care because the, the point of contact is just your need. It's not a relationship. But you see, when you come to this God, he's not just interested in giving you a miracle, power, job, healing. Uh -uh. He feels it's an insult to give you those things first. The first thing he presents is himself. Himself. Not just his power, himself. And he's not ashamed to come and live within an individual. So that you don't just call him the miracle worker alone. You can also call him your God. This is where sometimes, respectfully speaking, men and women of God make this mistake. We keep presenting to people a God that is far, and they watch His power, they watch His grace, they watch His wonders, and then at the end of it, we share the grace. And they leave having received from a stranger. They leave having been blessed by a stranger. Many of you go to the market. And you have a few people you call customer. They call you customer, you call them customer. Is that true? If you are going to go and buy goat or a ram, sometimes you go straight to them because you know. In fact, sometimes you have a relationship with them. You can call. Do you have this? They say, oh, you are welcome. So it's true you are coming to buy. But sometimes even before the buying and selling, you can sit down. How are you? How are your children? How is everything? You will even have nicknames. A day will come, you will sit down there and not talk about buying and selling. Because your relationship now is beyond what you are buying. What God is looking for, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me believers. God does not just want people who just prostitute themselves around him. Come and pick miracle. Come and pick breakthrough. Come and pick healing. Come and pick this. God, I've had enough. Let me run. Eh? When I have a problem, I, I, I'm telling you, even if I don't know you, I know a man of God who knows you. And God says, I will love you because love is my nature. God does not have love. He is love. And he cannot deny himself. However, there is a more excellent way. When he becomes your God. So that is, you don't have to wait until a koinonia service alone. Right there where you are. In your room. You can tell him, Lord, I thank you for your servant. But I also know that you are my God. When you meet Jesus, the first thing he gives you is not a miracle. Like a physical miracle. The first thing he gives you is not money, not cars, not a job. He offers himself. You can reject him. He will still respect your choice. This is the marvelous thing about him. You can say, Jesus, I'm not here for you. Just give me the job that I hear you can give me. And he says, well, I will give you because I love you. But is this all you want? I, I was preaching somewhere, I think it was in Enugu, and I was giving them an illustration. Imagine, for instance, let's say, for example, you have been calling me since yesterday. Apostle, I need to see you. It's an urgent issue. And I said, what is the issue? Say, I must see you. Imagine that you walk up to me, and all of a sudden, your attention is on my shoe or on my cloth. And I'm saying, okay, I'm here. And then, no, no, no. When I said I wanted to see you, it was not really you. I wanted to see your clothes through you. It's your cloth that I'm interested in. And you keep looking at the cloth and say, Taylor, just um, get this measurement. That's all I really want. Imagine the disappointment. All that call is just because you wanted something and not the person. So we pray and fast, God, come now. And when he shows up, we say, no, not your face. Just where is your hand? That's where I'm looking for. I hear that at your right hand there are pleasures. I don't want the left. Give me the right hand quickly. Let me get the pleasures and be on my way. It may look very funny, but Jesus is speaking to many of us right now. Believe in the Lord, your God. Believe in the Lord, your God. You have believed in the Lord, but can He become your God? You have come with pain. You have come with all kinds of issues. Many of us have written, you know, we've been having this miracle service for years, but there is no single month. Ministry has taught me that 
there is no exhaustion to the reality of human needs. Even if you were to hold a miracle service every day, you will still have people. That means when we say, if you have come for this week, don't come again. You will still see people as though they never received from God. Because the needs of people keep increasing. As one problem is solved, the devil now tries to come to cause another problem again. Just when you are celebrating, then he tries to bring sickness. Just when you are celebrating, then he tries to bring something else. But now, thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph. I sense in my heart to make the altar call now. In this kingdom, you strike when the iron is hot. And now that the Holy Ghost has spoken to us, He needs to become your God. Now, can I be honest with you? There are many believers who are not serious with God. There are others who do not even believe Him. Some of you probably were invited by so many others. You are in the main auditorium. Some of you are down all of the overflows outside or following online. And you are saying, Apostle, I... I, I hope that this your God is really God. The Bible says you can taste and see that the Lord is good. You shouldn't just hear. You can eat. There can be an experience where you taste and see. Like going to a restaurant. You can see a publicity. This is a lovely meal. We make this. We make that. You can actually enter the restaurant. Order the food and taste. And then for yourself, tell whether they lied to you. A man can taste and see that the Lord is good. Can I tell you this? Many of you have struggled. You have lived defeated lives. Anyone who does not have the immunity that his relationship with the Lord Jesus brings remains a perpetual victim of Satan, a perpetual victim of causes. There is no hope for permanent deliverance for such an individual. Even if you administer the power of God, the demons will live with speed because they know that there is no legal basis for the continuity of his freedom. They will only wait for him and return back with joy. The first ultimate and greatest deliverance the first ultimate and greatest healing the first ultimate and greatest prosperity is to come and receive this gift of himself god offers you himself i want to start a relationship with you here's what the bible says for god that same god so loved the world john 3 and verse 16 popular scripture that he gave his one and only john 3 16 his only begotten son that whosoever including you whosoever not some preacher not some whosoever believeth in him there is a law that that person should not perish listen you may be here and you may be the first person to make this decision some of you have had dreams where god has told you you are the one who he will raise to tear down these horns that have attempted to destroy god over your family let tonight be your night we will celebrate miracles signs and wonders but I need you to make this decision immediately for Jesus. I'm going to make an altar call. Wherever you are seated here under the sound of my voice in the main auditorium, the galleries, all the overflows down to the basement, the overflow outside, and those following online. Jesus Christ is calling you. Listen. You have a choice. This is the beautiful thing about God. He so loves you that he will not force you. But can I tell you, when love calls, answer. Before power calls, love calls. Power comes out of that love. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, if you will give me an opportunity, I sincerely want to win that war tonight. And then for some of you, the devil is telling you with all that has happened in your life, all that you have done, all that your family has done, do you think God will accept you? He can always give you a new beginning. And then there are people who are saying, Apostle, I remember giving my life to Jesus, but as it is, my life has gone haywire. I need to rededicate my life. I'm going to count one to five. Listen to me. Do not be ashamed. If I tell you to come and collect a check here, 
you will not ask whether your hair is in the right place or your shoe is in the right place. Run like there's fire on the mountain. As I count one to five, come to Jesus. One. All the overflows. Please run to Jesus. Don't look at anyone. Don't worry about who is looking at you. Two. Apostle, I need Jesus, but I'm ashamed of the person who I came with. Please leave that person and come to Jesus. This is a matter of your life and your destiny. Koinonia, are you celebrating salvation? Young and old, rich and poor, come to Jesus. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry His presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me, mortal man. Awesome God, mortal man, awesome God. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry His presence everywhere. You are my, your mind is so full of me. Hey, I'm just a. But you are the awesome Come to Jesus. What a harvest. Celebrate Jesus. Young and old together. Hear me. The more people yield and genuinely hand over to the governing authority of Jesus the more a territory can be transformed. A territory does not just get transformed by giving people money to start skill acquisition. That is wonderful. But the problem of man is first a spiritual problem. The problem of man is not just a financial problem. The problem of man is not just an intellectual problem. The Bible, all religions as a matter of fact, it is in this one thing they agree, that the problem of man is rooted in the realm of the spirit. I salute every one of you for standing here. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Can I tell you this? Don't let the devil lie to you that Jesus cannot give you a new beginning. That's why he brought you here. I don't care how it has been. I don't care what you have done or not done. When you come to him, you see, rebels don't come to Jesus. Rebels run away from him. So that you have come before the throne of grace. The Bible says to boldly come that we may obtain grace and we may obtain mercy and find grace to help, even in time of need. The only thing I will ask you to do is that when you stand here, mean every prayer from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Jesus is here. Someday when we meet in heaven, we'll celebrate one another and say, Thank God you made this decision. If you are still joining them, please come quickly. In case you were thinking about it or you were still shy, join them, leave your seat. And come very quickly. Don't worry, we will not take time. When we pray, they'll just have your details and you'll return back. And we'll be ready for the miracle service. Lift your right hand everywhere. Lift it high above your head. Let Jesus see that you are not joking. You mean business with him. Please say this after me. Say it loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus. Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Tonight, Tonight, I have heard your word. I give upon myself my ability to save myself is limited therefore I hand over my life my destiny to you I believe that you died for me I believe that you are the only Lord Savior and King therefore I ask you to come into my heart, be my Savior, be my Lord, 
and be my king. I receive forgiveness of sin. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that from today, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you now. Some of you are crying. Let me tell you, everybody who takes God seriously, it will take you seriously. Anyone who claims that he did not make this prayer, whether in the room or in the church, is not born again. If you are born again, you must have made this prayer at one time in your life. You don't naturally inherit salvation. You must make this, you don't wish salvation. You don't assume salvation. There is something called the assurance of salvation. Father, thank you for these precious ones. You have brought them, oh God. Some of them are the ones you have anointed to be the deliverers of their family. Some of them have gone through all kinds of pain and disappointment. Lord, some of them have come here tonight as their last resort. They have come trusting you. They have come believing that only you can save. Some of them have tried all kinds of options. They have tried friends. They have tried all kinds of things. And it has failed them. But they have come to you. He says, this is eternal life that they may know you. The one true God. And Jesus, his son. They have declared, and according to the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of hell, and of the grave is broken from your life. Yeah. Satan, take your hands of their lives and their destinies yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Take your hands of their lives and their destinies. From tonight, I declare that you go forward ever yeah. and backward never yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us in that we can be called the children of God. I declare that you are sons and daughters of light. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please look up. All of you, I want you, there are a number of you counselors. Let's be very fast because we are going to start praying. I want you to just um, go to my right, which is your left. You will see the counselors just waving the placard please follow them cooperate with them they will have your details just for a few minutes and you'll return to your seat and join us as we pray let's celebrate them all the overflows the same thing zaria also is connecting zaria make sure you are doing the same thing right now those who have made this prayer listen please if you made this prayer perhaps you are in your home your office wherever just following from your device it doesn't matter you can use the email that you find online there and let us know that you just gave your heart to jesus christ and there'll be a few people who will just follow you and follow up on you let's celebrate them in the name of jesus christ <laughs> hallelujah now here's what we'll do we'll give them a few minutes usually i make this altar call at the end of the service but i just felt strong in my spirit so what will happen please if we need a few people to join the council also we'll make it very fast let's make it very very fast so that they can come and join us because we need to pray fire is about to fall in this place and in the name of jesus god is in a hurry to change your life god is in a hurry to wipe your tears Hallelujah. Can we pray for a few minutes? Please rise up. Let's pray. You are here moving in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. We call you Waymaker, Miracle Walk, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness. 
That is who you are. We call you there. Promise keeper, not in the darkness. One more time. I call you. Miracle one. Promise keeper. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Please shout it after me. You can give them the mic. Help me, guys. Maybe two or three mics. Just give them. We can have it back. Say in the name of Jesus. One more time. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that every planting that is not of God in and around my life in and around my destiny be destroyed right now. Lift your voice and start praying. Are you praying? Every planting that is not of God in and around my life, in and around my destiny, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. 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 I'd like you to pray. He says, as for me and my house. Listen, whether your family members are here or not, you are going to stand in faith with them. Lord, as you are visiting me, wherever they are across this room, let the power of God reach them. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. As for me and my house, as for me and my house, as for me and my house. As for me and my house, <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 James chapter 4 and verse 3. Apostle James is schooling us in prayer. And he's saying that there is a possibility that men can ask and yet not receive. And he tells us why. Because ordinarily, everyone that asks should receive. But he's saying there exists a possibility that you can ask and still not receive. He says, because you ask amiss. You ask amiss. Amiss means out of patterns. And the pattern is, give us this day. You can't say, give me everything. You must mention what you desire. He said, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. What things soever ye desire, no assumptions, give us this day our daily bread. Are you ready to pray? 
you're going to open your mouth and mention everything or every area you need a visitation. No assumption. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Lift your voice and pray. No assumption. No assumption. It is feeling in your body, declare it. If it's a yoke that has sat upon your destiny, declare it. Hallelujah. 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 Now, here's how we do it here. Please listen. Whilst, whilst I begin to minister, for the sake of time, we have so many things to do this night. And I don't intend to keep us here beyond our normal time. So let me advise you up front, if you are yet to write your prayer request, we have a structure here that somewhere... Um, as we, as the meeting is ongoing, we we'll collate all the requests. Even those online, you can do well to just send in your prayer requests and we'll pray. So if you're yet to do that, please do that. Number two, if a word comes, now please hear this. I need to tell us this. It doesn't mean that if a prophetic word does not come carrying your name or carrying descriptions that directly relate to you, it doesn't mean God is not speaking to you. You see, the way God works is that what He says to one, He says to all. So if, for instance, God is speaking over someone who is trusting God for the fruit of the womb, even though it is that particular case I may want to see here, but it doesn't mean that every other person cannot connect. Are we together now? If God is speaking concerning maybe captivity over a family, and then... If a prophetic word directly relates to you, please do well to save us time by coming. At least or indicate if you are not within this auditorium so that we know. These are some of the things that take away so much time. It's not a vigil, so we are limited. Are we together? There's a lot we have to do. We have to pray uh, for the sick. We have to minister deliverance and so on and so forth. But I'd like you to believe that this will be your miracle service. That this will be your miracle service. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, I'm, I'm really sensing, and it's a very strange way, but I'm sensing that God wants to begin tonight by ministering to those who are in ministry. Ministers of the gospel. Those who are currently in ministry. And this is, what, this is what the Holy Spirit is ministering to me. There are people who have churches. There are some of you who have groups. And for some, they just came for greater levels of fire. You don't have to come out. I want to pray for you. And for some of you, you have the call of God upon your life, but you do not even know. And the Holy Ghost has been looking for you. Some of you, you are the ones destined to lift your family. And God has been speaking to you. This is the miracle service where He finally finds you. Hallelujah. 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 I pray right now for everyone 
who is in ministry and has not been producing the kind of results that the Bible says should follow. Or those who have the genuine call of God upon their lives. Please, I want you to bring those under the anointing as I pray this prayer. Right now, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, I stretch my hands. May fire from heaven rest upon individuals. Let there be an ignition from the realm of the spirit. Young and old, inside and outside. I count three. One, two, three. Take that fire now. Take that fire now. Please bring them out very quickly. Take that fire now. In the name of Jesus. Any church that is not growing. Any man of God who is struggling in ministry. I bring you the power of the Holy Ghost. Here at this miracle service. In the name of Jesus Christ. Intercessory groups. All kinds of platforms. That don't seem to be working. In the name of Jesus. Some of you, your ministries to your families. There are altars that God is raising you to fight and tear down. I decree and declare, young and old, May that power come upon you in the name of Jesus. May that power come upon you in the name of Jesus. May that power come upon you in the name of Jesus. May that power come upon you in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Ministry with evidence ministry with proof go and be a deliverer with fire go and be a deliverer it doesn't matter what yoke has sat upon your destiny and your families i decree and declare right now by the power of the holy ghost let there be that impartation of grace impartation of fire upon you impartation of power upon you Prophetic ministries, prophetic ministries, prophetic ministries, Kebarakata, multiplied visions, prophetic ministries, particularly prophetic ministries, whatever has beclouded your vision, so that you don't see again, so that you don't hear again, receive fire upon your destiny fire upon your destiny the hearing ear the seeing eye the hearing ear the seeing eye in the name of jesus let there be an ignition by the power of the holy ghost the lord is speaking to me about prophetic ministries All of you who are out here, I decree and declare, according to the word of the Lord, step into the grace that has been apportioned for you. In the name of Jesus, step into that grace. Step into that grace right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, Alongside these people, there are a group of people I want to pray for. Please hear me. The Bible says, Saviors shall come out of Zion. Can I tell you, every family, every territory has men and women who have been selected. God wants to permeate families and bring deliverance. But there are individuals that God must find. Wherever they are here, if you are the one anointed and ordained, that God will raise you to wipe the tears of your family. Wherever you are under the sound of my voice, at the Bakatos at the count of three, may God locate you. It's time for your family to arise. May God locate you. May God locate you. Young and old, saviors, arise by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Arise. 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 In the name of Jesus. It has nothing to do with gender. Male or female. If God has raised you. Whether you are a Gideon or Deborah. May the power of God come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come 
All of you in front, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, let it be a new season for you now. Let it be a new season for you now. Let it be a new season for you now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please let them go back to their seats quickly if they can. Let them go back to their seats. I want to pray a very serious prayer right now. This is a miracle service. And the prayer I'm about to pray is a major prayer. Can I tell you this? Truly, truly, causes are real. Truly, yokes are real. Embargoes are real. Yes, the power of God is there to deliver. But it does not happen automatically. This is why you are here. I want you to pay attention. There are patterns. I will never stop praying this prayer. There are families under the sound of my voice. The same thing everybody faces in the family. If it's retrogression, it happens to everybody. If it's delay, it happens to everybody. Right now, I want to pray. At the count of three, whether you are inside or outside, I'd like you to shout that name, Jesus. And as you shout, the power of the Holy Ghost will rest marvelously upon you. There are spirits that will not let destinies go free. Great people, some of you have traveled abroad and even returned back. Nothing is changing. My Bible says, Therefore, God has so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name, that at the mention of that name, every family here, having any charm or any cause, or any ordinance, any fraternity with darkness, at the count of three, may the fire of the Holy Ghost land upon that family. Are you ready to shout at the count of three? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Right now, yokes, causes, I break causes, generational causes, patterns of darkness. Be destroyed now. Be destroyed now. Be destroyed now. Bring them out. Be destroyed now. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit that will not let you go, I decree and declare, be delivered now. In the matchless name of Jesus. Please bring them out quickly. Help the ushers, whether you are an usher or not, please help them. Hallelujah. We are still praying. We are still praying. The Lord is delivering many, many, many people right now. Every altar that is sitting on anybody's life, yokes that will not let you go. Some of you have dreams. You go to bed in the night and yet this oppression comes. Right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may that fire locate you wherever you are. Hallelujah. Please pay attention. There is a marvelous work that God is doing here. Mana shalas koban de bradi galekusia. There are some of you, your oppressions have come in dreams. You go to bed in the night and all kinds of dreams. Going back to secondary schools, writing exams that don't finish, eating all kinds of things, fraternizing with dead spirits. Right now at the count of three, Makatos Kata, anyone's destiny under the siege of dreams, I declare at the count of three, shout Jesus again. One, two, three. Let there be deliverance right now. Let there be deliverance right now. Let there be deliverance right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Be broken by the blood of the Lamb. Be broken by the blood of the Lamb. Be broken by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hearing a name, Mabel. Mabel. Like M-A-B-E-L. 
Is there someone like that? We have to hurry up because I want to pray for the sick. I'm hearing a name, Mabel. Mabel. You are wearing something like her tie. It's like lime. Or it's, I don't know what color it is. Is there someone like that? Mabel. What's your name? Where are you from? Is the mic working? Hallelujah. What's your name? Mabel. Huh? Mabel. You are Mabel. You are Mabel too. Who is from Cross River? I want to pray for you. Where are you from? Where in Cross River? Okay. I want to pray for you. Because I'm looking at you and I'm seeing fire. And the Lord wants to bring deliverance to your family. You believe that? I want to pray for you. There's an elderly woman now. I'm seeing the power of God come on that elderly woman. You are not young. I'm seeing the power of God come on you. The Lord is bringing salvation to your family. Your prayer has been your children in the name of Jesus. I don't know who that person is, but right now, I'm seeing power from heaven. Please bring the person here. Malaskadela my sister, let me pray for you very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree over your life and over your family, everything that has a connection to ancestry, by the power of the Holy Spirit, let it be gone right now. Let it be gone right now. It will not follow you to your marriage. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be gone right now. In the name of Jesus and to you, please just help them make sure they don't injure themselves. To you, the other lady, Mabel, I stretch my hands in Jesus' name. Let there be a supernatural visitation for your family. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of the Lord, let it give way right now. In the name of Jesus, let it give way right now. In the name of Jesus, let it give way right now. Bring for me the person who shouts now in this main auditorium, loud under the power of God. I just heard that sound in my spirit, a loud shout. This lady, there's a lady, that, that lady placing her hand on her neck. Please tap her for me. Lift your hands. I'm seeing fire coming on you. And the Lord is saying he's removing everything that stands as a barrier. I don't know what it is, but right now, let that fire come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That barrier is over now. In the name of Jesus Christ. That embargo is lifted now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Is there someone with the name Jumai? I'm hearing a name Jumai. Jumai, this is what I'm hearing. Please, if that is not your name, please don't come out. Please, let's, everybody will be touched. Let's hurry up. Because I want, Jumai, who is that? Is there someone with such a name? Jumai, this is what I'm hearing. That, that's a northern, most likely. Please verify, make sure that you. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Hallelujah The power of God is coming on a businessman now I've seen that everything has failed this year you are into real estate or so this is what I'm real estate or something that has to do with land and construction but I'm seeing the power of God rest upon you now and the Lord is saying he's rewriting your story is rewriting your story. I don't know where that person is, but Karus Kati Lakatosh Kaprendegate Embrakatos Kati Balakata. May the power of the Holy Spirit touch you right now, wherever you are, in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever, please help him. Wherever you are, in the name of Jesus, let this be the beginning of a new season. This man, come. You, this man, please come. God is about to change your life. Come. What do you do? 
What do you do? I'm into real estate. You are into real estate. Stand here. God is about to change your life, my friend. You believe in miracles? Believe, oh, please believe. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Oh, there is something called a prophetic advantage. And in the name of Jesus, by the privilege of God's grace, I stretch my hands and I declare, may the power of the Holy Spirit shift you to a new season. Shift you to a new season. Every limitation connected to what you do. God who located you, and I'm using him as a point of contact. If there is anyone here that has been grounded in business, that the only thing you see is shame and reproach, may that embargo be broken now. Let it be broken now. Hallelujah. Why are they here? Okay, I'm going to pray for you. Why is he here, sir? Who brought him out here? Your name is Jumai? Oh, you just came out on your own. It's okay, I'll pray with you. No problem. It's all right. Huh? Sir, look at me. Don't be ashamed. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! Let it be over now. Keep him there. In the name of Jesus, every oppression and every yoke over your life now. I'm seeing something that looks like I'm seeing a serpent all around this man. I declare right now. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. I just saw like light. Jesus Christ, God is visiting an ancient altar. This is what I'm seeing. Let it be broken right now. Now, the name of Jesus Christ, let it be broken by the power of the Holy Spirit. For every one of you who has come out here. I'm seeing the Lord bringing, I'm seeing this map I always see now. And I'm seeing Nasarawa State. Nasarawa State. The power of God is visiting families from Nasarawa State. This is what I'm saying. I stretch my hands right now. The power of God is going to begin to come upon families. There are yokes connected to those regions. I declare right now, every altar. Every altar. Let there be deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be deliverance right now. I break those yokes. I break those yokes in the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you who are here, madam, please lift your hands. Look at me. Shame and reproach. That's what I'm hearing. and reproach let it leave you now never to return to you in the name of Jesus Christ mama where are you coming from who is huh? Kogi State hmm. did you come here alone yes sir you came here alone Whatever connects you to the dead, dead, like dead people, I'm praying this, and this is not just for her. I'm seeing the number one seven, that everything that connects people to dead people, they come to you in your dreams. When you are sleeping, calling you, they won't let you rest. This is the spirit of death over families. I'm, I'm going to pray for you, mama, but I'm using it as a point of contact. Please take what I'm saying seriously. If there is anyone here or any family here appointed unto death, right now I declare, as I'm praying for our mother here, may that, that arrow that has been sent to that family, let it return back to any devil that sent it. Let it return. Let it return to every devil that sent it. Let it return to every devil that sent it. Let it return to every devil that sent it. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, Mama. Right now, I stretch my hands. Parusha Kogi State. 
let there be a miracle i separate you from the spirit of death in the name of jesus and all of you who are in front here for whatever reason you are out in jesus name may god give you a visitation may god give you a visitation by the power of the holy spirit i'm telling you i sense such a strong healing anointing i know that god wants to really really heal the sick we we'll hurry up so that we we'll start ministering to the sick but i want to pray please stop this woman for me this mama please don't be embarrassed man lift your hands i want to pray for you please stand up stand up the lord wants to remove reproach where are you coming from ma don't don't cry madam don't worry you are you are here before the lord you see sometimes you may not know what kind of oppression people go through you see people laughing clapping hands lifting holy hands but there are people who are standing it's like they are standing on hot coals while they worship the lord hallelujah let me pray for you madam in the name of jesus i stretch my hands towards you you were going and the lord said i should stop you i declare that shame and reproach over your family and over your own life the spirit i want to pray here there is a spirit that makes people to be misunderstood where your evil becomes good your good becomes evil or there are people here it has happened to many people even in their workplace you do good things but people misinterpret what you are doing you know, when Bishop Oyedepo started ministry of Father and the Lord, this is what he said. That one time they were praying and the church was not growing. And he said, the Lord asked them, please help those under the anointing. It's a serious prayer I want to pray now. He said that the Holy Spirit asked him to come out. And he stood and he looked up and in a vision he saw a thick layer of darkness. And he said, this is the blindfolding demon that misunderstands what you are doing. And he says, now rebuke it. And he rebuked it. And it folded and went. And he produced a poster. He said, come and see. And that was it. I want to pray for someone here. The Bible says, do not let your good be evil spoken of. I pray for you. If there is any manipulation over your destiny that makes every good thing you do to be misunderstood, I break that spirit from off your life now. I cut that spirit away from your destiny now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, I declare this is your, don't cry. This is your liberty right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm seeing a family, my God. Ah, you are the only child. Not like maybe male or female. You are the only child in that family. And I'm seeing the spirit of hardship. The Lord wants to bring deliverance to that family right now right now in the name of jesus i don't know who that is if 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 there is someone like that please let me know i want to pray for you you are you are the only child only child you are the only child i want to pray for you in the name of jesus christ Only child, I want to pray. Parasodosh kali brande ge barus kadia pada, karakatosh kadia, magate barakatosh kade brande gade ba. In the name of Jesus, please stretch your hands towards me. I decree and declare the embargo of hardship and suffering and everything that has kept your. Please make sure you are coming out for this situation. This situation, don't just come out at random. I stretch my hands right now and I decree and declare honestly the power of god is coming on you in the mighty name of jesus every connection with yokes of ancestry let it be broken now 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 every yoke sitting on your destiny that you will not move forward i prophesy to you advance in the name of jesus Advance in the name of Jesus. Oh 
only child. Parandas Kadi Lakotosia. Advance in the name of Jesus. Advance in the name of Jesus. Advance in the name of Jesus. Can you imagine? Only child, everyone here. I'm praying. Let them go. Release their destinies now. I'm praying for everybody, but there are two people particularly here in front I'm praying this prayer for. Release their destinies right now. Release their destinies right now. Release their destinies right now. In the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus. Release their destinies right now. Everything holding you down, tying you down, be delivered in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let this be permanent in your life. And I pray for you, out of you, that looks like you are the only one, may nations arise. 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 In the name of Jesus. Please return back to your seat. Let's pray for the sick now. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. look up. Many years ago, I'm about to pray for the sick. I was caught up in the realm of the spirit and I had a vision. It was like it was locked down. And when I was there, I saw people who were very sick. People who, some of them were lying down, stretchers. And when I looked at it, a voice spoke to me from that vision. And it says, go and heal them all. And from that time till forever, God has not left himself a witness. Please hear me. Some of you are standing here for yourself. You are standing here for your loved ones. I want you to believe that God is a miracle worker. Within the few minutes we have, here's what we are going to do very quickly. Some of you already, this mass ministration has brought all kinds of healing for you. And even notable miracles. Everywhere, this is a miracle service. As I pray for you and rebuke that sickness, here's what I want you to do. Be bold to do what you could not do before. And the moment you find out that there is a miracle for you, don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. I want you to quickly, quickly make your way, whether you are up the gallery, whether you are around. In fact, some of you, as you check yourself now, probably I administer to you and you found out that there is a miracle happening to you. I'd like you to come and stand either by my left here or by my right. And whilst we are doing that concurrently, please, I'd like you to pass your prayer request to the last person at the aisle, whether left or right. And then PR uh, um, or, or ushers, all the officials, please do well. Make sure that you collate them and let's have it very quickly. Let me just give you a minute to tidy up your prayer request and then you stand up and we'll pray for the sick. We'll pray for the sick. Very quickly. You can take the second half if you are yet to receive your uh, a form or if you are done, just pass it to the person. Do it believing. Do it believing that God is visiting you. Please pass it to the last person. Can you arise? I want to pray for the sick now. Please let's be upstanding. Thank you for your patience. We want to pray for the sick now. I believe in miracles. 
I have experienced the healing power of Jesus myself in my own life. Please lay your hands right now. Those who are watching from your homes, this is a time to receive. He is healer. Lay your hands everywhere you are trusting God for a miracle. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. If you are standing in for someone or with someone, go ahead and make that contact. Everywhere, outside, make sure you participate. Please believe God for healing of anything and everything. Now unto the one upon the throne We raise a sound We raise a sound For you are God and God alone Hallelujah Hallelujah Father, you anointed us to be extensions of your healing power to the nations. And right now, I pray over your people. Many have come desiring to receive. Many have come desiring to be healed of all kinds of diseases and sicknesses. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and even with power. And it says he went about doing good and healing they that were oppressed. Right now I decree and declare, everyone here who is oppressed, I command the spirit that is back of any infirmity to be gone now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. I declare be healed in Jesus name. My God, already I'm seeing the Lord heal someone's, someone's limbs. I don't know if you're on a wheelchair or you're on crutches, but a miracle is happening right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be healing for you right now. Let there be healing for you right now. Let there be healing for you right now. I decree and declare, pain on the head, severe migraines, the Lord is healing right now. Pain around the joint areas, all around the arm in the name of jesus let there be a miracle right now now hear me every cancer cancer or any kind of cancerous growth we curse you now in the name of jesus hiv aids be healed in the name of jesus everyone who cannot see in the name of jesus partial or total blindness I command that eyes to open now in Jesus' name. Anyone who cannot walk, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let life and strength come upon your limbs now in Jesus' name. There are many people connected from several hospitals. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, let the power of God from here through the airwaves, let it come upon you and bring you life heart palpitations be healed in the name of Jesus growths around the body anywhere around the body we command you to give way right now in Jesus name there's someone you are having severe pain you've gone to the hospital it's like they said something is happening to your I don't know if it's your nerves or just the bones around your spine right now I'm declaring to you let the healing power of Jesus touch you now someone you have like a skin infection I'm seeing several things are happening around your skin it's not necessarily lack of hygiene is that something has happened I don't know some demonic thing I declare let there be healing for you right now the Lord is showing me people just the throat area it looks like you swallowed something but it has refused to pass down and it's terribly discomforting the power of God is touching you right now every pain around the chest area
be healed right now. There's, there's a lady, the power of God is touching a lady. You have a lump, in fact, multiple lumps on the left side of your breast. But as I'm praying for you, the power of God is touching you right now. That devil leaves your body forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ha. This is interesting. The Lord is healing a man of impotency. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let there be supernatural healing for you right now. Let there be supernatural healing for you right now. Regardless the medical report, we change it now. In the name of Jesus. Someone's left ear. Someone's left ear. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Lord is speaking to me that there is someone you are having the early stages of prostrate. Prostrate cancer. You are a man. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. By the power of the Holy Spirit, wherever you are, let there be healing for you right now. Let there be healing for you right now. Movement around the body. I'm seeing someone having movement. Sometimes you literally feel like something is moving around your body. Help them please. Help her. I command that devil to leave you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. What is that condition where you cannot sleep? In the name of Jesus Christ. Apnea. Sleep apnea. I'm seeing at least three people having that condition. Just rolling, rolling on the bed but never getting to sleep. You are unable to sleep even if it's for an hour. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are, whether in this auditorium or outside, I declare be healed right now. Be healed right now. Someone just around your wrist, the Lord is bringing a miracle for you. I don't know if it's that you... Was it a, 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 some kind of injury or whatever it is? I want you to check it right now. The power of the Holy Spirit is stepping upon you. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone who has like malaria or typhoid. You've treated it again and again and it has refused to go. In fact, you came here feeling so sick. Right now, I'm praying for you. May the power of the Holy Spirit touch you where you are. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, any pain around the bone region, whether neck, hand, the, the waist area, I declare, may the power of the Holy Spirit touch you right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Someone, you are having a problem with your nostrils. It's like you don't smell completely or it's that you don't smell well. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am praying for you. May the power of the Holy Spirit rest upon you now. There's someone's child here. I'm seeing like, like, it looks like bipolar, you know, acting as like madness. Sometimes the person just begins to talk. I don't know who that person is. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be healing for that person right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be healing right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a miracle right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. And any condition, whether I mention it or not. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. The Lord is showing me. I'm seeing someone, your child has autism. Autism. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, may the anointing rest upon that child right now. Let there be a supernatural miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing like a picture of a woman's womb. And instead of seeing a child there, I'm seeing like a big mass. I'm not a doctor, just resting there. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't care what is the name of what is there. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. We command that devil to go out of that womb now. We command that devil to leave that womb now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Therefore be healed from the crown of your head even to the soles of your feet. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Someone, your uncle, your uncle, I don't know, it's like you had a problem with your uncle. As I'm praying, check it now. You will see that that devil has gone. The pain is gone completely. Now, please check yourself. You find out there is a miracle I want you to run right now. Miracles are happening everywhere. Please, if they are coming to testify, allow them whether they are coming from outside. Are you celebrating? Make your way to the front right now. The power of God is touching people. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do before. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. A miracle is happening there. Are you celebrating what God is doing? Huh. Check yourself. Don't sit back. The moment you find out Mama has been healed, something has happened to Mama. Are you celebrating Jesus? More people are coming. The Lord is touching people. Please check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. There's, there's someone I was, I saw this when I was praying. I'm still seeing it. I don't know if it's that you could not use your left leg. Um, it's like, I don't know if it's that you cannot walk well or you could not walk completely. But I'm seeing the Lord heal that person wherever you are. Check yourself. If you are seated or you're on a crutch, stand up and trust God for healing. Stand up. Check yourself right now. Koinonia, are you celebrating what Jesus is doing? Hallelujah. We are going to take, please sit down for a few minutes. We will take a few, a few testimonies right now. Very quickly to the glory of the name of the Lord. Please let me know when you are ready so that we will hurry up. God is healing people. Supernatural healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. This man, what is that on your neck? It's a collar. Huh? You don't, you, your neck does not, you, you feel pain. Huh? Or you can't move your neck. Huh? It grab it. Let a doctor help us explain this, or I don't know what it is. Okay, my neck gravitates to the left. When, Gra I, try, when I try to move it to the right, goes back to the left. It doesn't move. Yeah, it goes back to the left. When oh, when you move, the neck moves back. Yeah, moves Dave, what is that? Yes, it's called torticolis. Yes, it's called torticolis. It's the spasm of the neck. It's, no matter what he does, it goes back to um, the intended position. Oh, yes. it doesn't stay. It doesn't stay. Can I pray for you? Place your hand there. Carry your collar. Come with it. Someone help him. Where are you coming from, sir? Where are you coming from? From Abuja? Yeah. Place your hand there. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't know what this is called, but I know it is demonic. In the name of Jesus, right now, I stretch my hands. Let there be a miracle for you. You see, something is happening to you. I'm seeing like fire just rest upon you. I wouldn't have called you except that I sensed that a miracle was happening to you. I cursed that devil now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know how long it has been, but right now I declare, let there be a supernatural miracle over your neck. In the name of Jesus. Sir, look at me. Look at me. Just place your hand there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Look at this. Keep it there. Keep it there. Keep it there. Turn. Keep it there. Look at this. Hallelujah. 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 Sir, stand up. Do it.
it again. Move left. Don't be afraid. Right, left, right, left, right, left. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, please look at me. I want you to believe in miracles. Don't let the devil make you think you are just acting. This is why not acting movies here. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that what has happened to you now, it remains permanent. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please return to your seat rejoicing. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. So, please come. Very quickly, so, yes. Apostle, you gave a word of knowledge for, you know, people with problems with their wrists. With, with their wrists. Yes. So, this four people we're having here. Check, check yourself. Let's see it. Any pain? How long has it been for you? How, what of you? Two months. Four years plus. Four years plus. Check it now. Any pain? It's completely gone. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare it remains permanent by the power of the Holy Spirit. Permanent by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes, sir. So you also gave a word of knowledge regarding people with pains in their neck, their back, and... And the way. How long? Okay. It's been four years because I saw and it comes once in a while. I even forgot that the pain was there. I was standing in the gap for my family. Okay. And I began to feel heat sensation when you declared the pain. I began to feel the heat. So I, 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 I can't. Before now, I can't bend. Bend now. Bend now. Any pain. Come on, Koinonia. Any pain. In the name of Jesus, I declare it will never return to you again. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. So, everyone here have one or, you know, two different situations of pain in their body. Okay, please pain. Come, all of you forward. here. Please come forward. Just bring them forward here. Where is... Okay, I will listen to all, but I want to listen to that mama's testimony. That, that, that our mother. I want to know what happened to her. In the name of Jesus, all of you here, please lift your hands. Every pain whether around your joint, wherever it is, the miracle that has happened to you, the power of God is coming on one of you. I just saw light right now on one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be the end of it. Because yours is not just pain, this is witchcraft. I command that devil to go, never to return again. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. You are healed. You are healed forever. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Apostle, Mama here has had challenge with her knee for over four years. She could not fold Your knee, her let her talk. Yes. She couldn't fold for the past four years. She went to the hospital. Before, before I can't fold my legs. Please help us with the mic. Today, I can fold it. No you can't fold your legs. Before. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Any pain? No. Look at this. Completely. For the past four years, sir. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you again. Go ahead. Very quickly. Movements in our body for the past five years. He says something snakey moves around. So when you mention the case, she touched her stomach and her chest. Then she fell under the anointing and now she's sound and whole. Where are you from? Lagos. Lagos. State of origin? Ogun State. In the name of Jesus, that devil leaves you now, never to return to you again. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes, this boy has had kidney issues for years, so he couldn't breathe very well. When you mention the case... He fell under the anointing and now he, he couldn't can breathe. breathe very well. Now he can My breathe. My friend, now. breathe. Breathe in. <laughs> Look how determined he is. Breathe in and out. In the name of Jesus Christ, it will never, never return to you again yeah. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Spinal pain for the past two years. He said he couldn't turn his neck and he could not stand for long. But the power of God came upon him. Now the pain is gone. You, you, what do you mean you couldn't? I was always having discomfort. I can't find a pop Do what you couldn't do before. You couldn't do this before. Lift your hands. Stretch like you are stretching. Any pain. It's gone completely. In Jesus' name we declare it will never return to you again. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Okay. We are still on. Yes, sir. So, Apostle, this is God's miracle upon the two mamas we have here. Hallelujah. Speak in house, any in language house, you can go ahead. Speak in it. When I cover Yadi, the Ella Damuna Shakara, there I can. Damon said the Kaya Shago Banaya, say, say, I shago. 
Me faru yanzu ama. Yanzu na jin shi soki yanzu. Kigudu. Run. Oh, look at this. She's complaining that she for a long time she couldn't sell because of a pain on her limb and now it's gone completely. It will never return to you, mama, in the name of Jesus Christ. Go and excel and I pray in addition to this may God prosper you. In Jesus name I pray. Yes, please. Let's celebrate God for her. Similarly, Mama also has okay. been having this problem for more than a year. Praise the Lord. This leg, since uh, the COVID-19 lockdown, around March, I've been having these pains. I, can, I don't go out. I have this, if my husband is not going to church, I will not go to church because I cannot climb bike. But you can't climb bike? No, I can't climb bike. I see my leg now. Yes. Come on, are you celebrating what Jesus has done? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, it will never, never return to you, Mama. You are healed now, you are healed forever. In Jesus' name. Let's celebrate her. Yes, please. Apostle, a very interesting case. She has a very strange condition. Well, I'm not a medical person, so I will not attempt to explain. (laughs) But, okay, so we have a medical person here, and I think... Okay, go ahead. Praise the Lord, sir. She just told me now that she used to have conjection in her chest. She has to have conjection in her chest. So okay. she's able to breathe very well. Okay. Her lungs will be congested and all that. Then her BP is always high. So her blood pressure is always high. Yes. Okay. To confirm that, I asked her, can I go and bring our BP apparatus to confirm if it has actually gone down? She said yes. So I went to bring it. So I had checked the BP and it has gone up. I would have shown the camera. It was 129 to what we used to read 150, 100 and above before. Wow. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare, let there be a miracle for you right now. Your BP returns back to normal in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Yes, please. So, Apostle, we have a very strange miracle here. Hmm. Um, so, please, my God. Praise the Lord. My name is Remy Akinsu, a politician. Oh. Um, two weeks, the last um, miracle he Miracle service. I came. Then I found out that I was healed. I, was, I didn't. I didn't even think about it. I could walk now. My son was trying to video my everything. He was surprised. This is miracle starts because he doesn't believe in all this. Well, Com- I came from South Africa. I said yes, it is. But the third day after the healing, I started having that feeling again. Then I said, what, what is that? So I called my son in South Africa. who said, Mommy, your house must still have something. That is not uh, of God. Hmm. So maybe it's in gas or something. But this today, today, yes. when I came, I was telling the, my neighbor who sat with me, I said, I'm not sure. I had to walk out, walk about, and try and stretch my body. And then make sure that I'm not. And, and right now, what happened to you, Mama? I feel stronger. Hmm. Just a minute, Apostle, maybe just to jump in here. She actually had what they call a motor skill disorder. Her body begins to tremble. So, in fact, for her, that was a shock. So, her body shakes, and um, I think... Like, like Parkinson's? Yes. Or? yes. So, um, I feel okay. Wow. But I can dance for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope I'm, I'm not mistaken. The one-time governorship governorship aspirant in Lagos. Oh, I'm sorry. My God. Truly, oh, she stopped shaking. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm so sorry we didn't recognize to honor you. May God bless you, ma. And even in politics, may God take you to the height you desire. We declare that this devil of shaking all around your body as it has stopped now, it stops forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's celebrate her. Amen. Okay. Yes. Apostle, Mama has had lump in her abdomen for two years. Let now. us speak. Now, the one strange thing about this is that the lump sucks her blood. So every time they give her blood, the, the lump will suck. Please let us speak. Uh, for the last, since 2018, 
Is, is this I the best of the sound? Please help us. Since 2018, I was losing weight and I went to my doctor. They found out that my blood level was low and my stomach was hurting. There was a big lump and it always hurt me. So when they give me blood, the blood will high and then the following day it will go back down. So, and then I had heart problem and then I was operated on my lungs because my blood was so low. So, when I determined that I must come here. And that's why I wore two pieces. So that I said, when they were talking about this, I would put my hand on my stomach. And as I put my hand on my stomach, on this side, and as the apostle was praying, the Holy Spirit fell on me. And I felt the heat all over me. And now, the pain is gone. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit, it will never return to you again. And the Lord is taking away the spirit of death completely from your family. Where is your husband? He passed away in 2017. Where is your son? He passed away. I have my oldest son passed away in 2011. Every spirit that kills the men in your life, I use as a point of contact to pray. Whatever will make people suffer and when it's time for them to stay, they die. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse that spirit now. And, and, my, and my youngest son passed in 2013. How many sons do you have left? One. Out of? Out of three sons. The oldest and the youngest. In the name of Jesus, Mama, don't worry. That one son we have, may God make him equal to ten sons together. That one son you have. We are standing as a family here to pray for you. That in the name of Jesus, you may not seem to have a husband. And all the sons that should take care of you in old age may have gone. But if the son is here or maybe he's following online, we are praying for you. May God give you the strength of ten sons. In the name of Jesus. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Let's celebrate very quickly. Give word of knowledge of love in the brain. Ten years long in the brain. Ten years. Ten years. Done. Disappeared. Confirmed by the medical person. Please let her talk. Um, praise God. Hallelujah. It's on my left breast. I'm I've had it counting, I think, either 10 years or more. Okay. I've, I've run the checks on it they found in the hospital, but you mentioned it, and shortly afterwards, I, I was able to put my hands in my clothes, and I don't... Completely, it's gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are you coming from? Here in Abuja. I live in Abuja. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare it will never return to you again, madam. It will never return to you again. Amen. In Jesus' name. Uh, let's see how many. Yes, sir. Let's see how many we can take so, more. Apostle, we need to hear this. Um, we need to hear this one. So, sir, I can't explain the, there was the name, the medical terminology. You know, these medical people, they frustrate us sometimes. You just stand and they call something that looks like um, a whole verse. Okay. Apostle, the mother has lumbar spondylosis. Oh, I know that one. That yes. demonic thing that stops people from... I know yes. that one. For the past five years. So they've been trusting God and believing God for a miracle. Though the mother uses a lumbar corset. So okay. in the course of the service, he called them and asked them to connect in faith. And now the mother can do what she could not do. Ah. No more corset. From where? She where is your say, mother now? She's at home. She's at home. She, in Abuja yes, here? Sir. Yes, sir. Wherever she is, if she's fallen, Mama, we salute you, we congratulate you. In the name of Jesus, that miracle remains permanent. Amen. Lumbar spondylosis, in Jesus' name, you leave Mama and we declare she's healed now and healed forever. And you for standing, what are you trusting God for? No, I didn't say kneel down. Please stand up, our time is going. My friend, what are you trusting God for? Think before you talk, don't just speak. I'm, yeah, don't be afraid. 
um, I, 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 I heard this. God have told me that I'm into. I'm called into ministry. Um, what I want is to have double portion of your anointing. Sir. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. You may pull a sit down. Our time is going. Listen. He's a very wise person, but. But let me, let me, let me, you think I'm going to just impart and t- go and read your Bible. You people think anointing is, mm-mm. God doesn't work like that. You are, you are, listen, my friend, don't worry. God is going to, it is, it is my joy that God will raise multiples of this. You get the point. But there is a process in the spirit, huh? But I want to pray for you. What do you do now? I mean, told me, I was doing business before, but if I start explaining it, it is Listen, I want you to take care of that your mother first. Eh? Yes, it's when you can eat that you have the strength to even do what you are doing. So I want to pray for you. Stretch your hands. In the name of Jesus, believe what I'm saying. Father, empower this, my friend, that one day you will come and stand here. May God use relationships to change your life. In the name of Jesus, may God raise a helper to just hold your hand and help you. I release this grace upon you. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes, please. Very quickly. All right. So, okay. Okay, so, Apostle, you spoke about the condition of malaria. and Hold on, actually, please. Hold on, please. So, she was actually placed on drip right on this ground. Oh, you were placed on drip here by the medical team? Yes, sir. What happened to you? Malaria. And they, they placed you on drip yes. while service was going on. And an object was, had been moving around her body for how long? You see, all these objects that... See, throughout this week, one week ago... And, and right now, what happened to you? They removed the drip. Yes. <laughs> it's good to have medical people who have faith. Check yourself. Both of you, are you sisters? I've been having migraine for over 10 years. So after the prayers, it comes back and malaria. So, after the prayers, you mentioned the case. I was laying hands on my head. So, I didn't want to come out because it has happened for over 10 years. So, I went into the restroom because once I perceive anything that has fragrance, it sparks it off. So, but as I went in there, I couldn't even perceive anything. That was how I knew that I'm completely healed. You see, that's how you know it's a demonic thing. For both of you, in Jesus' name, let there be supernatural miracles for you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let's, let's see if we can Sir, take two or three very more. Striking testimony. Yes, you go ahead. Word of knowledge of HIV. HIV? Yes, she has gone to take the test now from the medical team. And, she's and it's, it's negative. Negative. 12 years. 12 years. She's Hallelujah. The hey. Listen, let, let, let me tell you this. We have, we have very professional medical people. So don't you think that it's just, we have very, some of our people work in some of the, 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 the renowned institutions in this city. So if I tell you that someone was checked, we are people of integrity, we will not come and embarrass ourselves before the world. Twelve years. Ma- how many years? Twelve years. You prayed with me September 14th. I came to see you with my husband after suffer, suffering from a lot of shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Yes. But I thank God today. I and what happened now? It came out. This is the doctor. Yes, go ahead. I ran the test three times and it all came out negative. Now unto the Lamb upon the throne. We raise a sound, we raise a sound, for He's God and God alone. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Can I tell you this? HIV is a wicked and demonic whatever. And let me tell you, don't you think everyone who gets HIV got it from maybe living a wayward life? I have prayed for whole families where someone came in the dream, true story, with a syringe. 
and injected them physic in the dream and they woke up physically with hiv so not everybody you see with hiv don't stigmatize anyone you see that now because there are people who have this thing for various reasons but this is why god puts a miracle service imagine the shame and reproach three times three times father ma madam don't cry huh? in the name of jesus christ everything you have lost as a result of this reproach not only has god healed you but we declare a restoration opportunities and all kinds of relationships you have lost let there be restoration right now in jesus name yes please she has had severe heart issues in fact her, her brother is a medical doctor because of how serious the case was heart the, issue heart issues she, she weakness all around her body she couldn't climb stairs but the power of god came upon her and she can raise up her hand very well G all this she could not do before give when her the I mic came during the prayer i couldn't even raise this paper up like i had to be bringing raise it up let the devil see it come my dear run come and climb up hallelujah eh. hallelujah eh. hallelujah eh. heart condition couldn't even raise that thing up you see how bad the devil is if you cannot raise your hand up the same way he brings down people's hands he can bring down people's finances he can bring down people's honor everything that has been brought down that you could not raise up kaparus katebalakata in the name of jesus here at this miracle service if god could raise a hand back may he raise your finances back May he raise your honor back. May he raise your wisdom back. May he raise your fire back. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Quickly. You mentioned cases of skin rashes, hitches. The part of the has had it since 2009. What is that? Skin hitches, rashes on the skin. Rashes? Yes. Okay. The no, no, no. Please, we don't have time for the text. Just straight The power of God what? came upon him and yes. he sounds now. Completely. Completely. The same thing with her. The same thing with you. Yes. Sir. How long? What happened to you? I don't know. The, the, the skin rashes just came since six months now. I've been taking medications. Nothing. And, and you, now you just mentioned I'm not feeling any. You're rashes. not feeling the itch yes. again. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you. In Jesus' name. Yes, sir. So, Apostle, just quickly. Praise God. Um, some three weeks ago, I had a miscarriage and. I lost so much blood, and as a result of that, I've been having a numbing on my oh dear. left leg. So, coming into this place tonight, I felt the power of God. And you mentioned my case. You said somebody came with a left knee um, problem. Three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. So, immediately I felt perfectly okay. I can do everything. Do you have now. children? No. How long have you been married? Last year. Do you believe in miracles? Yes, sir. Place your hand on your stomach. Father, in the name of Jesus, look at me. You believe in Jesus? I stretch my hands right now in the name that is above all names. I command that devil I am seeing, let her go right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Out of her now. It's not miscarriage or anything. These are demons from the pit of hell. Be delivered right now. Let me pray for everyone here. Trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus, whether for you or your loved ones, I decree and declare, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, return with miracle children. Return with miracle children. Return with miracle children. My dear, tell her to write it. God will give her a baby boy. If her husband is here, write it. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old, for the Lord is doing a new thing for you. Yes, sir. So a person has a very strange condition. When he sits under the AC, no matter how low it is, he begins to find difficulty breathing, and it actually affects him. So he has a very severe headache just from that experience. Once you sit under AC. Once you sit under the AC. So headache or catar? 
Man of God, I greet you in Jesus' name. Amen. And my name is Emmanuel. Um, yes, just just the condition. Yes. Sorry, because so, of time. So just for time's yes. sake, Apostle. So the moment you prayed for healing for people with migraines and all. Just a miracle for him. Instantly. For nine years. Nine, nine years. For nine years. You can't sit under AC. I can't sit under AC. And anytime I go out with my governor to work with him, I do cover my nose. And uh, immediately I, I come in today for the miracle service and I discover that I am supposed to remove my face mask. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. I pray for you it is permanent. It never returns to you again. In Jesus' name. Please let's have two here. And then maybe, my God, there are so many testimonies. Do you know what? Let me tell you this. If you are unable to testify today, don't close down your testimony. We need to hear what Jesus is doing. The medical team, you can get it, we can collate it, and then by next week we can invite you to come and let the house know what Jesus is doing. It's not a good thing to be silent over profitable testimonies. They help strengthen the body. More than just showing that the man of God is powerful. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Just one, two, or three striking ones, and then we'll have... Yes, sir. So, sir, these are sportsmen, and it will be interesting to actually hear what they have to say about their condition. So yes, sir. Straight to the point. Yes, I have serious problem with my left leg. I'm in Abuja presently because the physiotherapist is taking care of the leg for like a month, my left leg. I what do you do? I play football. Oh, you're a footballer? Yes. I, I was playing for Kano Pillars before I had the injury, and then I left for two years. So... I can't really work well. I can't really play well. I've been struggling with it. I've done all X-ray, yes. the scan, and the rest. And then during the anointing, when he mentioned the left leg, somebody cannot really do stuff. And there's yes. always pains there. So I didn't want to. I had to go to the bedroom and check. And then when I came back, my friend was sitting there. I said, Maduka, my leg, I can't feel the pain again. He said, I Check it now. Me. Check it. Completely. You were playing for Kano Pillars before. Yes, sir. Can I pray? You really want to play football professionally? Let me pray for you. Look at me. My friend, believe in the power of God. You will be surprised. There is a grace that can shift people. I stretch my hands. What's your name? Shama. Shama. Tanzi. Don't rise and run away from God, though, because let me just give you a disclaimer. Most people... They use God. When they get there, they just dump him and enjoy. God is raising people who love him. But I stand by the God of heaven. See, there is a king maker anointing. King makers never become kings themselves. But they can enthrone kings and dethrone kings. I stretch my hands now. And I pray for you. My friend, carry this grace. Go to the field. I pray that God will use you marvelously. You will be a source of pride to your family. Let this be the beginning of great days in your life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. So, oh. similar condition, but he popped his knee playing basketball. Footballer too? No, I was playing basketball a few, mix, um, few months back. So I popped my left knee. Okay. I walk, I was with a limp. And now? And now, as soon as you check yourself. Jump. Check yourself. <laughs> check yourself. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, this healing remains permanent and the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Let's have a last one from this our little one. So, Apostle, this is interesting. He couldn't fold his legs, like bend his legs, but now... How old, how old are you, my friend? Eleven. Eleven. You couldn't fold your leg. What happened? I was playing ball. You were born that way? Playing, no, he okay, was playing ball. Okay, go ahead. Fold it now. Any pain? Any pain? Completely gone. Supernatural miracle. May God raise you to become a mighty vessel in his hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes, please, Apostle, very quickly. Three years partial deafness in the left ear. God, she couldn't hear properly with it. Your but left now, ear? Sir. How long? Over three years now. Can you imagine this? Yes, but now I can hear perfectly. Very clearly. Yes, very clearly, sir. May you hear the voice of your destiny helper. <laughs> that ear that has opened, whether spiritually I use... Because there is physical deafness, there is financial deafness, there is destiny deafness. I'm praying for you the same way God opened her ears in the name of Jesus Christ. In every realm of life where your ears cannot hear, let it be open right now in Jesus' name. You will not hear the voice of your enemy. As that ear is open, you will hear the voice of your helpers. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Yes, please. Partial blindness. Her right eye. She couldn't see with it properly. So the doctor confirmed it. They asked her to close the left eye and then ask her to see. And How she long? Can see. Madam? Three months and nine. And you, you could not see with which, which of them? The right eye. Close the one you could not see with. Close the one you could see with. No, she's closing two of them. Close. How, how do I tell her now? Yes. Madam, Sir. walk. Walk to the camera. Walk to the camera. Just follow the camera. Follow the camera. Look at what God is doing. Ah, look at this. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. That's all right. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, look at me. I decree and declare. You can, you can clearly see. When you see her eyes, you can see that this is almost as if she's completely blind. In Jesus' name, we correct this situation now. In Jesus' name. Please let that be the last for now so oh, that we can. Asians, you mentioned pelvic girdle pain. Are you together with the boy? Okay, so let's, let's just do it with the boy once and for all. And that will be it. Yes, please. The pelvic girdle pain has gone down. Okay, what saying, happened to you, Mama? I had a pelvic girdle pain. And for a very long time, but very, very lately, it's been very painful. So during the praise worship, I danced as if I, as I never danced before. So uh, yes. after I felt... The pain was gone. Completely. Completely, but when pressing it, you will I still feel a bit of pain, pain, yes. But when the word of knowledge came, the pain was gone. Completely. Gone. Check it now. Any pain. Any pain. Secondly, there was something like a phlegm, like cough on my throat. Okay. I tried so many times to cough it out. But it let, let him testify with the boy. After, yes. But just now, it's gone. gone. It will never return to you again, Mama. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Very quickly. If if you're here to confirm it, that's all right. We'll pray. You mentioned the case of bipolar. So it just came to present. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands over the little boy. How old is he? Who is he? Nine. How old? Nine years. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands over the little one. Amen. Bipolar. Amen. Be completely healed right now. Amen. Okay, two of them. In Jesus' name, I lay my hands on both of them. Oh, you can see this one is not bipolar now. This looks like autism. In the name of Jesus, let there be healing for both of them. You know, sometimes these conditions can be so challenging. You can't imagine how it is. In Jesus' name, let there be a miracle for them. And I, I pray for all of you. We apologize that we didn't have the time. But I pray that your miracles remain permanent. In Jesus' name. And for all those who have received their miracles at home, I decree and declare supernatural healing for you. In Jesus' name. And it remains permanent. Can you stretch your hands here for a moment? We're about rounding up. If you can stand, please. This is the final stage. Apologies, it's a miracle service and sometimes it will stretch us a bit. Just stretch your hands in one minute as we decree and declare. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. This, for me, is one of the major parts of this meeting because this is the most accurate representation of people's desires. We see in part, we prophesy in part. doesn't matter who is healed. Sometimes you just cannot minister enough. But I want you to stretch your hands right now and begin to declare over these requests we decree and we declare online offline we declare by the spirit of the living god father we decree and declare let there be miracles turn everyone's mourning to dancing sorrow to joy in the name of jesus christ every garment of shame for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord 
that he might be glorified. I decree and declare right now over every request here. I pray by the power that raised Christ from the dead that every request here is turned for a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying if there is any death sentence here represented in the name of Jesus we avert it right now. Embarrassing financial conditions. We turn that shame and that reproach to honor in Jesus' name. I decree and declare that every victory that Satan may seem to be having over every life, we decree the same way Jesus rose up from the dead. In the name of Jesus, everything that looks dead, it must come back to life. And as I would always declare, I decree upon these requests that these Egyptians you see today, in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God, may you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let me speak over your life. I truly believe in the power of prophecy. Every financial door, I just sense in my heart to pray. If you don't believe it, don't worry. Wait for what you believe that I'm talking about, then you'll receive. But I pray right now, every financial door that has been closed over everyone here, in the name of Jesus, causing all kinds of constraints and inconveniences, in the name of Jesus, let that door be open now. Financial doors be open now. Financial doors be open now for individuals, for institutions, for families. Financial doors be open now so that you will have supplies that will give you the opportunity to focus on your work with God and your destiny. Again, I pray that those doors be open now. Hear me? Anyone here who is in any kind of debt, personal debt, corporate debt, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, by the power that raised Christ up from the dead, come out of that situation now. Everyone who has promised to help you and has forgotten about you in the name of Jesus right now here at this miracle service I decree and declare let the book of remembrance be open concerning you Let the book of remembrance be open concerning you Hallelujah There is a garment of favor that an individual can wear and you can wear and move and everything around you will attest to the fact that you carry that garment every garment of shame and reproach prophetically i remove it from you right now and i decree and declare for your shame may god grant you access to the garment of favor favor in the city favor in the country favor in the morning favor in the afternoon favor in the night in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please help them. I want to pray. If there is any addiction that the devil is using to trap you. Because many people's finances go because of all kinds of addiction. I decree and declare right now. Any addiction that is trapping your life, trapping your destiny. Here at this miracle service. The power of that addiction over your life. Let it be broken now. 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 We believe in winning families. Any family here that is under siege, troubles every day, joblessness, weakness, death, in the name that is above all names, I speak over every family here represented. Step into a new season of favor. I pray for your spiritual life. Because you see, no matter what else works in your life, 
if your prayer life, your word life, your passion for God and for the things of God, if it goes down, everything went down. Therefore, I decree in the name of Jesus. For someone's prayer life here that is yet to catch fire, I release my faith with you from tonight. Spiritual laziness that will not allow you pray, that will not allow you fast, that will not allow you study scripture. In the name of Jesus, we declare the spirit that is behind it, let it live your life now. I declare fresh fire over your spirit man. Fire for prayer, fire for word study, fire for fellowship in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for you. We are stepping into October. I want to speak over your life. Everything you saw at the beginning of this year that your hands have not yet handled between the remaining days now and the end of september i decree and declare you will enter october with that expectation in your hand you will enter october with that expectation in your hand in the name of jesus christ wave your hands to jesus and give him praise tonight father we honor you and we bless you dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the Kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.